Hey, it's working. And, and, and he's Yay. typing like a... Whoosh, okay. Stream key works. Sorry, Yay. guys. We, we had to get a new key because uh, they changed something during the uh, live stream deal. Oh, God. What's happening? <laughs> we are, we're live, right? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Mind blown. So, okay, we're just real quick, just doing a uh, sound check, and then we'll actually start the show. Sound check from Geek Domo. Check, 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 check. Go ahead, lock your neck. <laughs> You're over here this time. Say, like. Saying words, giving out opinions, tossing them out like candy. Hmm. All hyped up on drugs and caffeine, so it should be an interesting show. Trending. Also, also, yes. is Omid here yet? You no. mean to me? No, Pentapod's oh. here though. Go ahead, the Omid. Or, uh, Omid. Trending. Say stuff. Which of us is more important, really? I mean, which of them is more important? Is it is Omid more important than Pentapod, or is it the other way around? Well, Pentapod's here, so she's definitely more important than Omid. Well, there you go. Then I guess we have our answer, don't mm -hmm. we? Mm -hmm. All right, Tobran, speak well, words. Then, it's, it's Omid's fault for not turning up, you know. He's meant to be the face of the community. No, no, he's not. I got that wrong. Didn't Trendane I? is echoing. Hold on, let me <laughs> right, turn it okay, down. Right, forget his book. He's the he's the I'll face of the the marketing machine. <laughs> so just be on every box and make sure so he his face community. across it. Okay, I, only I'm not echoing. Okay, so I can solve that. I got to put on the blue muffins. I didn't want to wear these. I can't stand these headphones. <laughs> Oh, but she's so pretty. They're just gorgeous. Look at it. It matches my shirt, at least. Wait a minute. I'll, I'll just put mine on in solidarity. Yeah, no, hold on a second. Omid can't have a no, day off fun. from our show. This isn't work for him. This is enjoyment. Jeez. How dare he have non-working life? Like, come on. Well, is... no, no. Now, the whole reason that he might not be here is, is because of... of lock up there. He's all sick. <laughs> He's got cooties. All right, so uh, the echoing is good. We fixed the echo problem. All right, we'll be right back. Uno momento, por favor. Safe. It's that time again for EverQuest Next Into the Portal. Your hosts for this evening are... Geek Domo. Box 6 Time. And Trend Day. Let's get to the show right about now. Hello, everybody, and we have a special guest tonight, Mr. Tobran. Hello. Who's over here? Yeah. Yeah. Down there. I get this all backwards. Yeah. Well, I'll figure that's it why, out. That's yeah, why. So during, <laughs> that's why during our test, when we were doing that, that's why I was like, it, it, because the fact that Omid's out here is all his fault. Like, is it right? Okay, yes. You were dead oh, on with that. You pointed right in the right spot. It's okay. Uh, A lot so, of times I'll be rubbing my face and I'll do this. And I'm watching my my spot in the thing to see which way I'm pointing, so that I know where I am relative <laughs> to everybody. Good way of doing it. Shit, I gave away all my secrets. That's a good idea. I didn't even think of doing something like that. <laughs> all right. So um, first off, Zaphos update. Um, didn't he get both of his legs replaced with uh, goat legs? Breast. Goat breasts. No, that was no. He got the breast on. No, he got his legs replaced with goat breasts. It's it difficult to walk. He had them added to his legs. Oh, I oh. see. Mm. So mm. that's that. Uh, and, and in the lower left-hand, right-hand corner is Mr. 
Tobran. So, Tobran, tell us a little bit about yourself. You've been on the show before, but some people are asking, who the yeah, heck are you? Um, I'm a YouTuber, I suppose, doing some EverQuest videos, but uh, yeah, that's it. No, <laughs> Huge people no, here as well. As well. <laughs> no. I, I think that's really it. Unless no, that's this. not it. You really, do really cool my ego and tell YouTube me more videos. about myself. He does do you some do great videos. You do a really videos. good dwarf impression. Yes. He's, I, I listen to him, he sounds just like a dwarf. <laughs> what did I say that sounded dwarfish? Uh, right there. Uh, Words. <laughs> okay, right, okay, we're done. Come on. Quick. Okay. Shut up. Just we're showing now. Now. <laughs> the, yeah. the desk. We're you done. do such a better Scottish accent than I do. Yeah, that is because I am you know, Scottish. Hmm, it could be. <laughs> could. There you go. That's that's another thing. Scottish YouTuber. Hmm. <laughs> Scottish YouTuber, not too many. Drinking With. a tall boy. With boyish yeah. good looks, according to the Twitch channel. Oh, yeah, really? see? Well, he's the only sh non shaved one. And the funny thing is, he's Scottish, he should, and he's a dwarf, so he should have a very long flowing beard, but of course, I think he's an exiled dwarf, which they shave more often. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> I just get this image of him standing in the Helens with his. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's oh, November. Yeah. It's All right, everybody. Time in every man's life, the first time you feel the wind blowing through your beard, yeah. <laughs> it's glorious. Oh, oh god. god! No, anyway, so we have so much cool stuff to talk about, and of course, we have Locke and Trendane, and I forgot the titles, so you guys know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was it was crazy technical um, difficulties thing as always. Yeah, they, all know, they all know we are. Yeah, <laughs> surely. And of course, and we and tonight we already have Pentapod in the audience, who's awesome. And uh, hi, Pentapod. She's better than Omid. Way better than Omid. Oh yeah, by far. So when oh, Omid yeah. watches this later on, it uh, uh, Locke told me to say that. So <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm selling him down the river. I don't, it's it's like a standing order, really. Right. <laughs> Anything we must say to beat up Omid, it's it's a great idea. All right. So I guess we can get into the stuff because we got so much to talk about. I mean, we have like two hours worth of stuff to talk about before we even discuss the question and answers, which everybody Who's, Whose what? birthday is next? Mine's in June, so who's Mine's who's in June. Is, Mine's is in August, so Yours just went by. Lock? Yeah, we just we just missed mine. <clears throat> last week. Last week was gonna be my birthday stream, but uh Aww. in his birthday it's suit. And then he caught a cold. And yeah. Domo, your birthday's June thirtieth. Okay, so it's real close to mine. Hmm. I was going to say we need to get an Omid pinata and just <laughs> break it open on our birthday. <laughs> An effigy, Sorry, effigy gel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the questions, yes. So everybody in the audience, if you'd like to ask questions of us, like we are not developers, we're just complete crazy fanatics. So uh, that's why we do this show. Uh, but if you crazy. and and we and and we study like crazy, so we might have some answers for you. So just go ahead and write the question in brackets. And uh, just say question, and then say what the question is. <clears throat> and we have a question fairy in the audience tonight, who is Meka. And uh, Meka is going to be doing all of the questions. Yeah, just like that. Question, what's a question? Just like that. So then we can see it, and we can grab it and put it in the chat. So go ahead and start asking those questions now if you want, and then we will uh, we'll get it going. Okay. So, topic number one. Big reveal Monday news. Oh, i got to show you something. This is Into the Portal, right? So yes. now I have what it says. a portal. <laughs> I got a portal. Right there. <gasps> it's so pretty over there. It's magical. It guess, really is. guess where I got that? Oh. Um, uh, Draenor. No, yes. We're going to talk about World of Warcraft tonight. <laughs> no, that's from Landmark. Yeah, that's. I just turned the alpha channel way down, and, and uh, it's just white. So it's like a portal, like the background. So but it's a racist it's, portal. Yeah, it's just, it actually doesn't loop very well, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. But, all right, so big reveal Monday news. What was the big news that came out this week, guys, that we're also excited about? Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just be quiet. We'll be fine. Oh, are you kidding me? Okay, so Don't they announced. The I guess I'll answer it. I was waiting. I was waiting. Go ahead, Locke. 
alpha dates, beta dates. We had uh, founders packages all launched on Monday after Dave saw J- Dave Jordan <laughs> tweeted 11, 11, 11, 11, which was Monday. We had a whole a whole heap of stuff uh, thrown onto <laughs> us, and it was it was a glorious day, and there was much rejoicing throughout the land and gnashing of teeth. Mm-hmm. So it means those of us who uh, uh, who've coughed up a little bit of money are going to be playing EverQuest Next Landmark on or before the twenty eighth of February. Pentapod, we need at least an alpha access for Trundane. What computer am I going to play it on? Well, it, it, it'll play. It'll play. You, it'll work. It play. Fine. You know, I have a hard time running Chrome and Audacity at the same time. <laughs> you need more RAM, I think. I've got four gigs in there. I almost said megs. It's like, what a wonder! <laughs> yeah, four meg, yeah. Just big spender. We'll, we'll get you sorted out, Chandane. Just we need to get him an alpha or something. Yeah, we'll do a Kickstarter for you. No, I'm, I'm, That's I'm, a great <laughs> idea. No, it is not. A Kickstarter for Chandane. We'll get him a new computer and, and the alpha the, the Trailblazer pack. Yeah. <clears throat> no. I'll chip in for sure. Yeah? No, what I'm going to do is... Uh, I am eventually, probably sometime later this week, uh, or uh, not later this week, there's not really not that much this week left, probably first thing next week, I will get uh, the Settler pack, because even if I can't play it, I still want to support the game. So yeah. my next uh, check will hit at that point, and I'll be able to afford to at least get a Settler's pack. So I definitely want to do that. Okay, so let's talk about the packs then. So Settler pack is uh, $20, 19 mm-hmm. and you get into Unlimited Beta, uh, which we'll talk about the, the unlimited beta and the other beta in just a second. Uh, then there is the um, Explorer Pack, which is the next one up, which is fifty nine ninety nine. What's it over there in the UK, guys? For these packs, uh, uh, forty quid. Forty oh, quid. You, for can, the- you can convert it on the website. It, it, um, it's yeah, got like it's a convert to different, different currencies, which is a really nice touch, actually. So uh, yeah, yeah. cheers, SOE. That's that was really thoughtful. Yep. Uh, and then the top end one, which is the Trailblazer, and that gets you, that's uh, 100 bucks. Mm-hmm. 7,000. Which is um, 75 of the uh, queen coins. Mm. What are the GPPs? Yeah, Great British pounds. <laughs> Great British pounds. Sterling. 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 Um, so, yeah, that's, it's a big stretch. Uh, let's talk a little bit, let's, let's, let's touch, talk on a touchy subject for a second. I know that we're supporting the game, and that's great. But it's a free-to-play game, and we're all dumping money. It's a lot like Star Citizen in some regards. But what do you guys think about paying for Alpha and Beta? What are your thoughts? Kind of mixed, I suppose. I mean, on one hand, it's great. You know, we get priority access to the game. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, you know, is it such a great thing to see, like, a half-finished game? I mean, it would be great to see it, you know, develop as it goes, but... You know, for some people, it might be like, oh, they've seen the game at a very early stage, and I think, oh, this is actually quite crap. I'm mm-hmm. not going to play it again. And it's, they've not really given it a chance because they've not seen how it's going to be when it's finished. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to be the main problem. What are your thoughts, sir? Luck? Um, it, is, it is an interesting thing. You know, paying £75, you know, that's, that's a lot of money for a computer game. But it's interesting you mentioned Star Citizen, you know, how much money people have, have thrown at that just because they, they believe in the premise of it and they believe in the idea and they want to see it be successful with, you know, with very little to show for it. And, you know, we, we have seen um, quite a lot of, you know, EverQuest Next really. We're, you know, we've seen enough and heard enough to say, you know, we believe in this and, and we're willing to support it with our money in, in the same way as people do on Kickstarter, I guess. I don't like to think of it in terms of paying for alpha or paying for beta. I think that access you know, should be seen as more of a, a bonus for kind of contributing and believing in the project. Because remember, when it comes out, it's free to play. Like anyone, <coughs> sorry, I'm so ill. Any, anyone who wants to, anyone who wants to download and play the game can do it for free. That no one is under any obligation whatsoever to pay. You know, we're just we're just people that are willing to support the project. You know, with with a little bit of money. Um, uh, before before it goes live, and I think I think that's nice. I think it's it's a nice thing for us to do, isn't it? Mm-hmm. What do you think, Trendane? <sighs> Figures it would come to me next. <laughs> the guy who did QA for the last ten years. I think the most critical thing is for people to remember that you're not going to be playing the game. 
You know, I mean, it's you play a finished game, and that's you know out there. For, from my perspective, you are basically paying to <clears throat> you know get all the the extra cool stuff, the goodies, yeah, know, the the various goodies that come with each pack. Some part of me thinks that there's probably going to be more. Mm-hmm. There'll be little little treats that are going to come down the, the pike later on. Different outfits. Something. Yeah. Um, much like with Star Citizen, I think a lot of the funds that are going into it are going to go directly into its development. And so, in a way, you know, I mean, not only by helping to test the game by getting into the alpha and the beta and whatnot, because if you think you're just going to get in there and play it and not report bugs when you see them, you are dead wrong. Because or not I'm see bugs. Sure. <laughs> yeah, because they're going to be plenty. They're going to fall through the earth. Them. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and. You know, I, I think that you know the money will go towards the development, just like our feedback will go towards the development. And with the level of transparency that we've seen from Sony so far, I think it's a brilliant, brilliant thing oh, because it's yeah. very clear that they they definitely you know want to give us the opportunity to help if we want to. So yeah, I'm all for it. Yeah, I think that's the thing as well. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say, you know, what a, what a privilege to be able, you know, to get to get into a game at such an early stage and really, you know, hopefully, like Trendone says, it will be it'll be at the point where you know we'll be able to get in and really drive development. And um, I remember uh, Dave Georgeson in the in the video they released today said it's great how many people are buying the Trailblazer packs, how many people, yeah, that's really what I was going to say because because you know as I was saying, it's people that want to support the project. And you know we want to get in, and we, you know, I'm just speaking for for myself, but you know, I'll, I want to get in, and I want to, you know, try and help make it the best game that I can with, you know, in, in the limited way that I can. But you know, still being able to make it such a great experience, and you know, being able to make it the thing that I'm really hoping it's going to become. And you know, five years down the line, when it's this, you know, when it's this huge mega megalithic monstrosity of a, of a success, you know, you'll be able to go back and go, well, you know, I was in the alpha, and it nearly wasn't like this. Mm-hmm. There was nearly just one giant statue of Omid Doriani, and you know, think of all the effort we had to put into overthrowing him during the uh, <laughs> during the interstellar he? war <laughs> that happened after Skynet was killed. <laughs> exactly. No, I think I think it's a great thing. Uh, just like with uh, Star Citizen. Now, there are, the reason I brought it up in the way that I did is there are a certain group of people that sort of feel that Sony is a much bigger company than, say, Chris Roberts, Robert Space Industries, you know, Sig, uh, and those people are trying to build this game from right off the ground, from scratch. So it seems a little bit better to support them than say a company like Sony. But Sony is very big, has many divisions. And the more money that they can generate now will ultimately pay off for everybody in the long run because they'll be able to have better uh, quests. You know, you know, they'll be able to add things to the game that they probably couldn't have done without having to go back to the parent company and say, hey, can we get another $10 million to do this thing where now enough people have put into it where they can just go, you know what, we just take money out of that coffer and, and use it to develop this, this or that. And this is also concrete data that they can... You know, put push upstream and say, no, look, people are really interested yeah. in this. They want it. Three look quarters it. have bought the the Trailblazer <laughs> yeah. pack. You know, I mean, of all the packs, most people have been buying that. So that right there says that people are invested in this game significantly. Literally, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but yes, Chris Roberts is God, so that that does help. <laughs> so, well, I think I, I think it's I think it's a great thing, especially for a free to play game. The way the way I see it, every. You know, every penny I put towards a free-to-play game is a few other people that don't have to pay for it, but will still be in the game. And you know, I, you know, I always talk about um, added value when we when we talk about these things. But you know, just just players being in the game, players being around you, is you know, it adds to the social nature of the game. It gives you more opportunities to play. So you know, for every person that can just log in and play and not have to worry about paying anything, you know mm-hmm. that. That's better. That's better for everyone. So, you know. Yeah. Zarya, just, hi Zarya, just says that uh, we are whales. Don't quite know what that means. <laughs> You're Welsh. Oh, Welsh, maybe. No, there's no oh. H in Wales. Uh, oh the, God, if he's turned up. Oh, here's one. Here. Oh, crazy. Speak <laughs> the name of the devil, and he shall arrive. Up he jumps. Now there goes all okay. of our fun. Oh no. 
Oh no, we're we're still gonna have fun. <laughs> okay, it's <good>. expensive. <laughs> oh, yeah. so oh. so let's real quick just talk about the goodies that come in the packs, and then we'll go on from there. Uh, so the low level one, it, you basically get the beta al access. You get a flag. Um, let me see. I got the flags here. It's the um, which one is it? The settler's check settler. Out the sweet flag. There we go. This is this flag you get, uh, and then what else do you okay. get? And you get the alpha. You get the beta access, unlimited beta. Now the difference is in the um, the pack that you get the Trailblazer later on. It comes with beta keys, but those are only good for a week. Where this one's unlimited beta. So however long beta goes, you're in if you get this this pack, which is a twenty dollar uh, pack. And so then the next thing that um, you have is the oh you also get the pickaxe right. Yeah. The pickaxe comes in this. Yeah. So let's go show the pickaxe. Founder's pick. So um, little fun note here. That is the icon for Brel. Is the uh, the axe with the glowing orb thing on top. If you are into the lore at all. Uh, so it is a pick and an axe. Pickaxe. And uh, normal pickaxes have an axe on one side and a pick on the other. But this is kind of combining them together. And so you will be able to chop down the trees in the forest with this. I think he said all trees you can you can get with this. Uh, even the diamond ones. Even the diamond trees. It's, uh, <laughs> it's an interesting combination, actually, because uh, we know that there's five tiers of gear. Mm -hmm. And the pick part of it is the top tier one. So it is the most efficient at farming tier one materials uh, that you can get. Rock. Whereas the axe is the lowest of the tier five axes. Mm -hmm. So the axe can harvest any type of wood, but it's the least efficient at harvesting tier five, whereas the pick can only harvest tier one, as far as I'm aware. But, but it's it, the it most can, efficient at it, so it, it can, is, it is yeah. interesting. It can, no, you can get every tree with this. Kind of. Just it takes a lot more wax to take it down. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's nice. It's it's a nice little kind of leg up, but it's not really, you know, it, it's not so much of an advantage. Oh God, we'll get into that Peter we'll put in nonsense later. But you know, it's not so much of an advantage. I did a whole show on it. We can talk about that if you want. Um, oh, no, it's, please no. It's okay, just, I'll it, I'll get annoyed. <laughs> one second here. All right, I'm already ill. You have to be nice to me. <laughs> Where is that written? I don't have that in my notes. It was in your contract. <laughs> well, I'm trying to find the. Uh, I don't want to contract anything here. from you. <laughs> oh well. Too late. We'll figure it out. All right. So um, back to the different uh, ones. Then we go up from there to the explorers pack. So what's in the explorers pack? We get uh, a new t type of uh, outfits for the the men and women, which is called the um, courtiers regalia. So I'm showing it right now on the screen. This is the uh, the outfit that comes for the males and the females. Isn't that the courtiers? Courtiers regalia. Yeah. That mean I pronounced it wrong. I didn't hear you say oh. the co part of the. All I heard was tears regalia. I'm like, oh, courtiers regalia. Yeah, I might have skipped. Courtiers regalia. That's right. And uh, you also, of course, you get everything from the previous tier or the previous one. So you get the axe, and you also get the. Uh, what else do you get here? You get the big bag, the bag thing, which I don't have a video for oh. that. Yep, you get you get the bag Make thing. Yeah, you can yeah, either which, put which is something I, I assume will will be in in the cat in the cash shop as well. Um, I think that's probably something they've just lifted straight out. Yeah, I'd be surprised if it wasn't. We'll yeah, it's it, 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 space. It's it's such an obvious thing for a free to play game, isn't it? You know, you don't have to have it, but it's convenient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of the we can talk about this in a second, but a lot a lot of the issues that people are having with this being pay to win and all that is they think that this is only a one-time deal and I think no matter all the things that are in this might be unique looking for us because we got in it and you could say this is shows that I was with this but there are probably going to be other tier one axes or pickaxes and other bag enhancements and other rings of finding stuff and all the other things mm -hmm. so It'll be it'll all be low level stuff. I think people are crying because they they think it's going to be the best thing that you can get in the game, or right. you know it'll be better than what they can get. And honestly, you know, if if previous games with cash shops or anything to go by, then it's it's not <laughs> going to be like that at all. So one more thing in this pack is also the ring that I was just mentioning, and the ring is uh, it gets exclusive. It can <clears throat> exclusives can be equipped to give you a ten percent bonus to all resource gathering when out exploring in the world. 
So if you if you gather 100 diamonds at the time at the time you finish gathering your 100 diamonds, you will have got up to 110 possibly. Right? Is that? And that of, means that means you win. You win <laughs> because you paid. So you, you won. won. Yeah. Well you done. Won. You win. You you win. See, Ten for me, for me, it's completely the other way around. I mean, I'm I'm much more the kind of. But then, sorry, Toby, I love crafting. Mm -hmm. So you know, it was like I would somebody would be using that 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 pickaxe, and I would walk up and go, "Oh yeah, you got the the thing," and then I would pull out the axe that I meant. To, I made this. You, <laughs> you just went out and bought it, you lazy piece of. I made this. <laughs> <laughs> the sweat of my brow dripping into the hot forge as I pounded it with the hammer. Yeah, I guess this is a touchy subject. Some, you know, we we won't go there right yet. Okay, so the, the final one is the Trailblazer pack, and that's the one that's been this most successful. It's a hundred bucks. Uh, oh, pr also on the Explorer, you get Alpha Access, which is going to start on or before February twenty eighth. So Omid tonight was going to tell us exactly what date. The alpha started, because mm -hmm. he's listening. <laughs> and Trendane's got a fork. He's like, fork you, Omid. <laughs> fork you. <laughs> and then he's going to spoon him next, because it's more painful. Anyway. Uh, oh, I thought you meant spoon. <laughs> yeah, no. No, we're not spooning <laughs> like that. <laughs> anyway, so... Uh, the next pack is the Trailblazer pack, and that one comes with Alpha Access. You get the Trailblazer flag. I'm going to go ahead and show what these little goodies look like while we're talking about them. Do -do 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 -do. This is the set, no, this is Settler flag. This is the Trailblazer flag right here. So you get this, and you also get access to the Alpha forums for Landmark, which uh, on that forum you can have a... Uh, <laughs> That's a very good joke. Kicked on with, yeah. <laughs> um, so on the forums, you get this. You can have the same kind of logo. The one thing is, you can't upload your own avatars on the forums, but I guess that's why because what they're doing is you'll be able to use this as your avatar, this flag. And uh, if you could upload your own logo, you could just download it and re-upload it and be like, yeah, see, I'm a founder too. <laughs> I got the same yeah, logo. The epic title. Yeah, the titles and all that. Uh, what other goodies? Um, you get the Void Vault. I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like, which we talked about earlier a minute ago. This is the Void Vault, which apparently you will be able to build yourself eventually just by crafting. So even though you start off the game with this vault, it allows you to access your um, your bank from anywhere, I believe. Do you guys have more details on this? I don't know the exact details of all about the vault. Yeah, it was, vault it was in the... Um... No, you got Sorry, it's over. I'll have to use that. Are you sure? Are you sure? I am sure. <laughs> Don't test me, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Illidan's coming through there. You are not prepared. Yeah, he's sick. Make him shut up for a while. You go, Toby. Yeah, Toby, you, you're drinking <laughs> all that beer and stuff. <laughs> all right, so, okay, from what I know from this is that you put items in it, and then you open up another portal somewhere else, and you can take items straight out. It's almost like a instant bank, almost. You can put anything in oh. and take anything out. And it means you can just take... It's like almost having extra inventory space, except it's like slightly less convenient. Hmm. But, yeah, I like the fact that you say that you can actually build it in-game. It's just a small perk. Because you're going to need two of these if you want to use it. And if they give you one, right. then... You put stuff in and it never know, comes back out again. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then what else we get? Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. You also get the Nobles Regalia. Now, the, I like the looks of this. Oh, this, yeah. this was the whole reason I bought the me too. Trailblazer Pack. pack. I'm not going to deny it. It just looks so <laughs> good. It's a it's a nice looking outfit. It really is. Oh, look at that cape! So nice. This is, it nice. really got me thinking about how the gear and itemization is going to work, though. You see the the way the cloak sort of all the way around his neck, and there's like shoulders in there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It does. Uh, it does make me make me think of you know how much of uh, how much of gear is going to be sort of a purely cosmetic thing. You know how crazy are we going to be able to go with designs of stuff? Cause if, if you think you could quite easily. Sort of tweak that so it went all the way over his head as well, and you know, or further down, you know, further down the chest and up on the neck, and 
I could see that. It's just it's just interesting the way that like the different sort of pieces of gear are, are going to be separated on a character's body. It just, I still think that's just, just a shoulder. It's just a it's like a high high necked type of shoulder that yeah. you would have, uh, and then the helmet would go inside of that. So you'd look a little bit like the who's that guy from Doctor Who? He has that really big head. <laughs> Santaran. Yeah. Uh, and then um, the cape obviously is separate, and then uh, the gloves and boots and everything kind of line up. But then. We also have the tech commander's gear, which I forgot to show the, the high tech gear from the other the previous pack. But you got you just get the point. It basically looks like this, but it doesn't have the same glowy uh, greaves, I think. Uh, but yeah, neat, very cool looking, especially at nighttime, running around with these lights glowing and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, uh, it's so pretty. It that makes pretty. it easier for the ogre raiding parties to, <laughs> to find see you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this fool running around with his lights on. Um, Dude, yeah. I, I, I did think it was a really <clears throat> nice touch for them to uh, put a bit of sci-fi stuff in there from the start. Yeah. Almost, you know, just to encourage people to, you know, think outside the box a little bit and not, not just make stuff that you could use for EverQuest. Right. Which brings us to a point that uh, the... We'll talk about that in just a second. We'll get to that. Um, last little bit about this. Uh, you also get uh, four shareable clothes beta keys, which uh, is pretty nice. Uh, they're only a week-long key, though, so if you if you think you're going to give them out to four friends and they'll be able to play forever, mm, no, just for a week. Um, and then you also get this limited Ooh, time. Although it was, sorry, it was, it was clarified that they do, um, you can have, like, uh, what am I trying to stackable. Say? With, yeah, they're stackable. From <laughs> I'm, I'm ill. Leave me alone. <laughs> He's sick. He's taking lots of drugs with caffeine. Nice. Yeah. Uh, you also get your name in the credits, which is awesome. But they haven't asked. Like, there was no specification of, and something I'd like to hear clarified at some point. What name do you want to put in? Do you want to put your online name, like Geek Domo for me, or Lock Six Time for you? No, yeah. it's all Google Plus. You have to use your real name. You have to use your real name. Sorry. Yeah. God. <laughs> you saw my rant about Google Plus. No, that was, oh yeah, that. <clears throat> yeah, not good. Um, so yeah, I'd like to see that clarified. Like they give us the some kind of thing to say where would we like, you know, what name would we like to have in the credits? You know, I want Captain Stinky Pants. You know, whatever. But that's what I want in the credits. That's probably the exact reason why they've not done that. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> they go completely well, it's, it's awkward names. for me because uh, it's awkward for me because my name is Jesus Hitler, and people yeah. always think I'm joking. Uh, Jesus, Jesus. This is awkward. Jesus Hitler sounds better. <laughs> Uh, okay, then you also get access to the beta forum, which... Uh, oh, you didn't get that with the other one. I'm sorry. And the forum title of Trailblazer. What's up? Well, I'm just wondering, you know, if you, if you got your name in the credits for the game, does that mean it also goes up on Moby Games, where all the credits for all the games are listed and everything? Cause mm, that'd so be then you pretty get, cool. Then, you, then you're part of the... <laughs> no, I, you gotta I get a SAG card. This. Yeah, you gotta get a SAG card and, uh, yeah, do the whole deal. Uh, alpha Boost uh, gives you a 20% bonus to collecting resources for two weeks of real time during Alpha. Now, this is the one that trips me up the most. They're going to do a wipe. They're going to take away everything you got. So why bother? I mean, if they, I, I guess if the Alpha is like six months long, then well, it's not because it, it's only a month long. So for two weeks of that month, you get a boost to gather items. What's it good for, really? Because they're going to take it all away. It's not like you get to keep the alpha stuff when you carry. Well, remember, over. you're you're there to test the game. It's just to help speed up the process. So. I guess, but it's but I yeah, wouldn't really list it as a. I wouldn't call it a perk. I would just say you know, whatever that this is some kind of temporary deal. Now this makes me wonder: Do you have to use this thing and save it up and use it during no, actual no, no, release? No. Oh. no, because I mean, one of the things with QA is that you would have to have oh. some people who are using the thing that accelerates your, your, your advancement, and then you have to have some people that are not using it to level so that you, you can see the, the two different things. So if point. it's compulsory to use it, then that's a problem. Okay. Um, as, as it's an item, I, I assume that it's not compulsory to use it. Um, also, on the live stream, they were, you know, they were very emphatic that anything that you... You know anything that you paid money to get, like you, you're not gonna just lose it. It's not gonna poof go away. They're so not gonna take away I, your titles and stuff. But they are gonna wipe. They're not gonna take away your titles and things like that, like la the the titles that you got by doing this. But nope. they are gonna take away your buildings and and materials that you gathered between alpha and beta. And they're actually, I think, yeah. Okay, so Omid says it's. I'm 99% sure it's a potion you can use whenever you want, but it'll be wiped if you don't use it before alpha ends. Okay. That makes sense then. So if you knew that you're going to be playing for the next two weeks solid, then you want to save it till the last two weeks of the of the alpha or whatever. 
Yeah. All right, good. Thank you, Amit. All right, so that's pretty much all the new stuff in a nutshell, right? That we covered all the, the, the different tiers that came out this Monday and uh, the excitement of that. Yeah. Yep. So I'm hoping it'll, it's going to start sooner than February 28th, but... I think well, are. I mean, they did say ter- February twenty eighth was the latest they would right, do. Right, that's it. your drop dead date. They're yeah. not going to go any f- longer than that. So it would definitely be before that, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, it's just made a good point, and ch- other people mentioned as well that uh, you can save all your templates in between uh, the different phases of alpha and beta. And as we know, um, you can you can replace any material very easily. So you could, you know, when you get to beta, you could just put your template up, make it all out of dirt, and then go out and as you find the different materials that you use it with, just Change replace it them. Yeah. So it's, oh, yeah. it's just a question of going out and uh, going out and gathering things again, which... That's a great question. Uh, that's something I didn't really see in all the videos that I watched, and I watched the live stream and all the footage. When they're building that, just the, the generic gray block, did they have to go get that block first, or is that just something you can build out of it to start with? Like, that's just your starter brick, like dirt. Like, you can build it out of that first those sort of gray blocks. I didn't see that really clarified anywhere, and so maybe the... I think you need to go out and get that. I you think have they to just get had that. it on them just to show off. All right, and so you, no, if you I wanted to... No, I think... Sorry. I was going to say, if you want to build this massive statue to Omid, right? So you're going to build this massive Omid statue, you're going to have to go out and <laughs> gather all of that block to build that, or is that just something you can build right off the scratch, right from scratch? We don't know. It's a tier one material, somebody says. Uh, well, we'll find out. Well, I'm, I'm sure I remember seeing somewhere that uh, certain materials you just you just had an infinite amount of things like dirt and rock and mm-hmm. just things that are everywhere. That's you know, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's just said. Oh, me just some says super common resources, yeah. so they are virtually unlimited. Okay, cool. And Petabot says clearly a giant Omid statue would be made out of gold and diamond, which you would have to gather to show your devotion to Omid. That's absolutely true. Okay, here's a question for the uh, the devs in the audience. Glass. When's it coming? <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, all right, so our next topic. Well, we yeah, that was a long topic, that one. That's a big one. That's a big one. I had a lot of stuff to talk about. Okay, new roundtable response and question. So what was the... Uh, uh, lock your up on this. What was the new, the new, the new roundtable response? The new roundtable response um, was a little bit of a little bit of a talk about uh, death penalties, which I remember being a very uh, hotly debated topic uh, mm-hmm. when the question first came up. Um, you know, a, a lot of the people, a lot of the uh, original EverQuest fans, you know, wanting a, a very harsh death penalty. They want to go back to go back to the days where death really meant something. And we've heard a lot of talk. Uh, from the developers as well that you know they they want there to be a sense of danger in the world and you know we we hear the phrase risk versus reward a lot so you know it it seems like there's there is going to be a sting to death but in the uh, response video you know we found out it's it's not going to be as harsh as the original everquest which i think is you know probably the right way to go for a, especially for a free to play game mm-hmm. um but it's definitely something they're still talking about. They're still looking at ideas. One thing I thought was absolutely fantastic. I mean, mentioned a uh, shut up, I mean, <laughs> mentioned um, uh, there was a thread on Reddit where someone uh, postulated an idea of uh, you know death penalties being different uh, depending on what killed you. You know, because obviously different things killing you, they're going to do different things. Mangle you know, your, body. your body, or yeah. perhaps your soul, or your mind, or, or something, and things like that. Um, could create very compelling, uh, compelling gameplay indeed. So, but yeah, it's still it's still very much uh, an open topic, and they are looking for you know ideas and discussion uh, to carry on with it. So, good times. Mhm. Mhm. What are your thoughts, guys? <sighs> I, I don't know. I'm not really a huge one to talk about death because you know I'm, I'm too pro. I don't die. But <laughs> <laughs> you know. If if I die in a game, I don't really expect it to hold me back and make me think, oh, I don't want to play this for a while. Like the original I EverQuest, want to get back into it, but I have that penalty to know that I've done something wrong. Well, the original EverQuest, would you could lose levels, and that I got stuck yeah. in a death loop once, and I think Terry Michaels even talked about that that he didn't want to have some sort of punitive 
loop system that just destroys you, you know? I mean, one death's okay, two's really bad, and then after that, it should negate all of those effects. Um, what are you thinking there, Trendane? You have the evil eyes going on right now. No? He's good? Okay. Just he's, he's, he's just hanging out. All right. I think you want it. You want it to have a sting, but you don't want it to be a quit point for people who are just trying it because it's free. Yeah. And you know they play for a couple of hours and then they die and then they go, oh what? I lost all my stuff and I lost a level and I have to go and find my body and you Screw know this, and I've I'm got done. a debuff that I have to wait a certain. You know you, you don't want to really pile it on, but at the same time it that's, depends on so many factors though. Like you know how transitory is gear going to be? You know a, a game like DayZ for example, you lose all your stuff when you die but you know it's very much part of the game you know gearing up is is a fun part of that game mm -hmm. or you know minecraft you drop all your stuff when you when right. you die but you know so but everything is very transitory in those games you know you'll you'll die often you know you'll your equipment will break or you you'll run out of ammo or something so you know gear is very disposable whereas a lot of people have become used to in MMOs working for a piece of gear you know when you're on that gear treadmill when you got the piece of gear that's the moment where you go yes I've done it I've finished you obviously haven't you know because it's the still next new piece is going to come out wait for them. yeah but it's uh, you know when people kind of have that prestige attached to it and people you know that it creates a you know that sort of sense of worth for for them you know to just to strut around in this piece of gear and everyone knows that you know they had to <coughs> big x or y bus that um that actually happened for me within in wow there was one particular piece of headgear that kind of had like ram ram horns on the side of it mm -hmm. i think and it's for when you push king when you put it on a worgen, it makes him look like a tauntaun, which is awesome. So I really <laughs> wanted this thing, and they're like, "Well, there's two versions. There's the PvP version, and there's the PVE version." I said, "Which, which is one easiest? is craftable?" Yeah. Oh, you know? okay. And they're like, "Oh, the PVE <laughs> version." I said, "Then give me that." I'm like, "But it's not as good as I don't care. I don't." <laughs> and now that you can care. transmute everything, <laughs> that's something I hope they have in this game. I hope they can do you can do transmutations because uh, in World of Warcraft, I'm playing a monk, but I'm playing like a poor monk like I'm role playing it and uh, I bought the lowest level gear I could find like the rattiest tattery look his stuff and I put it on this epic level 500 gear you know and I just walk around in this stuff and, and I have like a little I have like a, a farmer's hat and I got my head down all the time and it just it's really cool to role play that and I would like to see transmutation at least in EverQuest next that my, um, my, my worgen priest still wears his neophyte robes he started the game with Mm -hmm. Because he's he's very pious and he does not feel that he has grown enough as a priest to wear the next set of robes up yet. Right. There's even totally though he's like level eighty three, he doesn't awesome feel like he's <laughs> to, to, to do that sort of thing. So I think I hope that they do that. Yeah. Which ironically makes him more worthy. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, uh, Solid says they will have a costume <laughs> slot. No need for transmute. But I don't know. I still. I mean, you can can you wear that costume in, in battle? Because if that's the case, yeah. then I guess. But okay, because so, like in the request two system, it, you just have like a whole different tab for just put on different gear for what you actually have. Okay, but so like you can go in the player studio and just buy a different piece of gear. Okay, good. And then okay. have it on top of your gear. Because I was because in Guild Wars two, when you go into oh. battle, it switches from cost from town clothes to. Yeah. Your other clothes. Your normal yeah. armor. Yeah. So I mean, you they, can buy really... transmutation stones, but I don't want to pay money to be able to play look the way I want. Mm -hmm. That seems a bit silly to me. But yeah, God, I've got so many of those things. They just they just throw them at you now. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's, it's like everyone gets the candy. <laughs> Yeah, the the town clothes they they really they really missed a trick with that in Guild Wars too. It's just you know. All right, so back to the topic. I, we kind of got a little off uh, permadeath. So um, yeah, we kind of fell over off the the permadeath. <laughs> the uh, the permadeath system that they're talking about is it really permadeath? I mean, is it going to be? You know, you you have to start. You're not starting a new character, obviously. Because you're pretty much doing everything. So what what kind of death system have they really suggested that sounds like it'll it'll be more realistic? You heard? For, have you heard anything? For, for, for request next, yeah. I, I think the, I think it's something that's very much in the design stages at the moment. It seemed like to me from watching the video that they're you know they're really still 
um, looking at ideas and different ways to approach it. And I think it will be something that's that's getting tweaked right up until launch and probably after as well. You know, it's it's one of those things that's a constant. You know, it's the battle between you know it's the shade of grey, isn't it? You know, what's quite light for one person would be far too severe for another person, and you know how can you. Uh, how can you reach that sort of perfect compromise? But now, see that just some. I'm watching the chat, and somebody said it's a permadeath is stupid, and then somebody said, "Well, what about something like DayZ?" And DayZ's permadeath system, it's it kind of works. And then, of course, the Star Citizen one, which somebody said I was thinking about that instead. But even so, those are new games that you you would think that oh, newer games they don't they've just gotten away with the permadeath, but they have a little bit of coolness to them. I mean, when you, you're in Day Z and you're getting chased down by these zombies and all of a sudden somebody shoots you in the head and you've lost everything, it's like this gut-wrenching feeling that like you're like, damn! And then you do everything you can to get it back to that spot to try to get your stuff off the ground. And, you know, it's that, that part of it is really cool, but that's, of course, a survival game and this is an MMO, so I'm not saying that that would necessarily work 100% in this game. But if they had some sort of penalty like that, I don't know how it could really work, but... There's, I think permadeath is one of those things. It's brilliant. It can be brilliant, but the the whole game needs has to be, to be built designed around it. Around it. Like, yeah. That needs to be. You know, that's like a day one decision. This game is going to be a permadeath game, and then everything else has to be built on top. If you try yeah. and shoot on it in to more classic uh, kind of design elements that we used to in MMOs, it, it just it's not going to work. But I mean, th- like you say in Daisy, though, it's brilliant. Like, just the feeling of like when you go around the corner and you see another player like crouched like, oh, down, yeah. another ready? player that's yep. on the floor, like just that that sort of feeling. You're like, I'll me. kill him and take everybody's loot <laughs> from both of those guys. Yeah, that's I mean, a great it's, it's, feeling. Yeah, things like that, that sense of danger. You know, it's why why I like open open world PvP a lot. You know, that that sort of sense of danger and excitement is incredibly difficult to to replicate within a game you know it's, if it's focused on pve mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense you know because in pve like every encounter sort of has to be winnable uh, i think it'd be a bit of a cheap design if you know they made a boss that you just that would or, that would always kill you because you know, it's, it's just cheap i don't think people would stand for it but in pvp sometimes you get into a situation where you've just got no chance of winning and i think you know that's when to me that's when death becomes interesting you know when when you really are in a situation where you could die at any moment, you know, rather than in... But then with the with the AI systems that they're talking about, <laughs> you know, maybe it could be the case in PvE that we end up in situations that are unwinnable for us. Yeah. So there's a little ramble. What were we talking about? <laughs> Death penalties. That's fine. <laughs> uh, okay, so what's the, the new question? That was uh, your the, building style within Landmark, right? Right. So right. Uh, they're going to say, which style do you prefer? And the reason they're asking this is because they're going to have both a sci-fi feel to the game and also a um, fantasy feel to the game. And what, what, who's winning right now, Locke? You have the score. Well, uh, the, the question says, you know, what genre are you interested in building? You know, fantasy is by far and away... Uh, out in the lead at the moment because you know it's I think it's sort of seeded with EverQuest fans so obviously mm-hmm. we were talking about it before the show a lot of is people interested in a fantasy game of course they're going to be interested in in fantasy but also there's other things in there like, I don't even remember the other options actually sci-fi was in there his, like historical uh, stuff was in there as well and I think um, it's just something you know that I think they're trying to trying to let people know that you know it's like everything you know, within reason, everything is is sort of fair game. You know, you you don't have to go in there and build fantasy related stuff if you don't want to. You know, you, you can you can build whatever you want in whatever genre. You can make up your your own genre completely. You know, I'm I'm hoping that people will. I'm I'm hoping sometime next year I'll be able, you know, to go into an instance that someone's built of an entirely, <laughs> you know, their own kind of artistic vision. But in children's book M- horror films. Games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Just like anything, you know. I'm sure people will do. There's going to be know, zombie. There'll be, there'll be something. like a rise of Cthulhu thing, and they'll, yep. you know, they'll yep. steampunk stuff and. Yeah, steampunk. I can see for sure. And then there, this actually plays into the, an article I just read that was on Reddit, and then it was lambasted pretty quickly. But uh, somebody got into the whole thing that Georgeson said that they this has a potential to be a sort of like a birthplace of all these new various MMOs because. 
they're going to allow us to build in EverQuest Next landmark, of course, but also into EverQuest Next, kind of our own themes, and you could potentially, and we don't know anything about this yet, but you could potentially have your own server that is running a Star Trek theme, or a theme that is like, you know, like some kind of zombie horror genre, where you could go and change the character skins, the monster skins, you could change uh, the way the AI is working, of course, because using story bricks, and once you learn how you put story bricks together, you could build your own kind of really cool MMO that's completely built by you as as a player. Go ahead, Trendy. Willy, Willy Wonka's Chocolate Room. <laughs> Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, or the Oompa Loompas and everything attacking you. I mean, you could go nuts. You literally could just go crazy. So you could take any of your old games that you want to see turned like somebody was saying Bard's Tale, uh, all these kind of cool games that you'd like to see done in a different way. You could do it yourself in, inside this. I think he was actually addressing Bard Tale, not speaking of the game Bard's But Barzell, you could do that over again. Well, yeah, you, you could. I'm yeah. <laughs> what if you wanted to take and redo Minecraft in Landmark <laughs> with much better voxels and pixels? I think they've already done that. It's called Landmark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, the, I understand this is not something that's going to happen tomorrow or anything like that. Just that this was a uh, an idea th- sort of brainstorming thing that somebody was coming up with that, because it was something George said that it's going to be kind of open for everybody to I- interpret and build how they want. So it doesn't necessarily have to fit the fantasy genre, but that's most of us why we're here. But there there could be some people that want to take it a little bit to m- maybe to Victorian Tolkien. age. Or, Tolkien. Tolkien, yeah. Exactly. I, I'm gonna. One of the first things I'm gonna build is uh, Hobbit House. I want to build uh, under or the something from the Shire. Or maybe make the whole Shire. So um, I think I think of of everything that's happening. The the thing that I'm most excited about is just the games that people come up with within the game of Landmark, which we we know is gonna happen. You know, think about people that have been running D and D campaigns for thirty years. You know, those people that have just got incredible, incredible stories to tell with such rich characters and informed by those random things that happen during the game, they can put that mm-hmm. into that MMO system. And, you know, we, we, can all, we can all go and play it. And, you know, like you said, skinning characters, player studios, creating, you know, creating new characters, new mobs, <coughs> new, new gear and, and skins for everyone. That then is all you know available to SOE to use, and they can look at you know they can look at things that people are doing within Landmark that are popular, and then lift those and create them as features in EverQuest Next, and you just end up with this feedback loop of you know just going round and around. And to me, it's it's incredibly exciting the potential that we have. You know, Dave Georgeson said you know when he said about people creating MMOs, it's a bit of a you know, people haven't really latched onto the idea yet because it's it's a bit kind of yeah, we'll believe it when we see it. But honestly, the the potential that exists um, within Landmark to me is is phenomenal. Everybody's looking at Locke. Everybody's looking. At Locke. No, me. Oh, uh, me just said those something are, that those you that are new to the show. Me just said something that's really uh, really cool because I didn't even think about this. Somebody could take and redo EverQuest One completely from scratch like yeah. all the original EverQuest people lore. will do that as well yeah. I reckon that be the first thing that happens yes. <laughs> all Source, people that are clamoring for EverQuest 3 Source just know, said the, uh, yeah. go, uh, yes. someone will have to make Nariac so I can get lost in it so yeah exactly completely difficult completely get lost and yeah I, th- I think somebody's going to go ahead and just do this anyway because a perfect example there's a lot of people all huffy and puffy saying that they this should be EverQuest 3 right mm. And there's a whole group out there that said they should be developing time to do this. Well, if you guys are that in, in, enthusiastic about that new EverQuest 3, then just take it one of the landmark servers and turn it into your EverQuest 3 server. And there you go. Now you've got what you want. So, very cool. I'll go. I'll, I'll check that out. You're right. Definitely. Yeah, <coughs> and we can <coughs> log in. I've never played EverQuest, but I bet it'd be brilliant. You probably I bet. Would. But it... Uh, it would be it would be cool to, to and, and you can log into other servers so you can try out the sci-fi server you can jump over to you know, the other servers and, and Omid was saying that a lot of times they're just hoping that people are just going to kind of coagulate into the groups that they sound kind of want to be around like this server is now known as kind of a sci-fi server so everything on there is really sci-fi related and this server is more of like a you know Bram Stoker's Dracula kind of Victorian England style server and that's where everything is set up like that there and you could go to these different servers and check them out 
every time you log in, it says, hello, your friend. Dean. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to my server. All right. So very cool. Uh, another topic we talked on forever. We're already up to an hour. Okay. Wow. Next topic, building in landmark. So what we're going to talk about now is uh, the tools that they showed in the live stream. Yay. Yay. Um, Nobody cares about those. Nobody cares about these, <laughs> even though that's what the whole show is about. <laughs> well, again, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the tools looked very awesome. I'm not a 3D modeler, and I, I could tell by just looking at it that I could figure out how to manipulate things three-dimensionally in this game. So that part was cool. What uh, what do you guys think about the, the overall the tool set and all that? I'm going to show some in the background while you guys are talking. I mean, I, I always knew we were going to be able to stack voxels. Like I, I thought that was going to be pretty much it. You've got to stack voxels, maybe a bit of a tilt. But then when we saw the tools, you can actually change pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. I was like, whoa, especially with the line tool as well. Like That blew my mind. When I saw they could actually make a complete, perfectly smooth slope, I was like, whoa. That's yeah. really cool. I love that so much. And to me, that's easily the highlight just having that sloping tool yes. and the heal tool as well that was cool you can just set reset like let's say you made a really crappy house you're like i hate that i don't want that anymore you just wipe it all you mm -hmm. don't have to do anything to the server you just wipe it in the instant and it puts... be a problem if you have someone come on that you don't like <laughs> right yeah. well, i don't think they'll be able to touch your stuff but yeah what, what he's talking about with the heal tool is uh, say you dig a big hole and you build this massive house with a basement and everything and you go oh this is crap you can just literally take the tool and, and erase the land, and it puts it right back to the way the server had it from when you first picked it over, picked up the land. So, yep. are you guys uh, Trendane or, or Locke? Do you do one of you guys play Minecraft much? No Trendane. Oh yeah, right. Uh, I dig on Minecraft. Me and me and the lady do mm -hmm. play it. <laughs> so when you saw the, some of this stuff, it seemed very Minecraft esque, but but more powerful, like a lot more powerful than what you could do in Minecraft. I, I honestly think comparing it to Landmark almost sells it short in a way. Um, yeah. I mean, there's there's Minecraft Creative Mode, but that's really you know it, it's it's like Lego on your computer. You know, you're mm -hmm. really just putting things on top of each other. Whereas, you know, the the tools that you have in the tools that we're going to have in Landmark are um, for me they're just they're just already far beyond what is possible within Landmark. Um, you know, just in what's going to be what's going to be possible, uh, what's going to be possible to build. Like you know, in in Minecraft, you can't you can't even make a sphere. You know, you can't you can't have arbitrary angles of anything. You know, and what's happening on the video right now, just being able to template something and just keep placing it and placing it. You know, just makes everything so quick to build as well. You know, right. you see these these huge mega mega builds in Minecraft that people spend months and months and months doing. You know the amount of time that's going to be cut down um, for those people that already make incredible things um, with those tools. Like it's the mind boggles just even trying to comprehend what what they're going to be able to do with these tools. And in such a such an intuitive interface as well. I know Domo, you you were saying you can just see how it works, mm -hmm. and the fact that it's so intuitive and user friendly makes me um, really excited for the future as well when they start adding in. You know, different developer style tools. You know, when they when they start putting in story bricks type stuff and uh, all of that. You know, hopefully the interfaces for that will be just as intuitive for us to cre create our own um, questing experiences for people, or you know, gameplay modes. Uh, it's it's very exciting. For those who are not familiar with story bricks, it's basically you take and build a storyline within a character's own AI. So uh, what I mean is you can you can tell it that this person has this kind of likes and wants and needs and uh, they, they'll, then, they'll then interact with the environment and the players by what their likes and wants and needs are. So uh, that on top of what... That in itself is an amazing thing. I mean, even if you didn't, weren't an MMO developer, you didn't want to do anything with MMOs, but you wanted to make... Just say you want to make a butler at your house and the butler... Uh, or in England you call him a valet. Uh, the 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 guy is just there and he answers the door for you. Like you could build an NPC to do that for you in Landmark, with, with without too much effort. Or you wanted somebody to be maybe sell your wares for you. You could make uh, uh, an NPC that just is your re your store and you you're out crafting and this guy sits back at your house and sells stuff. 
What's your thoughts here, Trendane? Well, um, actually, it was something that that uh, that Soil D mentioned in the chat just a few minutes ago. Said that you know I, I wanted to see how water works, mm-hmm. and that's actually one of the things, especially this part right now that that's um, you know being built with the the angles on the side of the the tower and whatnot. I was part of me was I mean, and it may not be in there, but I was really hoping that they could put like a water voxel on top of it and let it go, and we could see how it. You know, yeah. would flow down those different different facets and whatnot. Like I said, that functionality may not even be in there just yet. Right. Um, the early days. So, right. Um, but I would have loved to have seen that, or just just drop one on the on the ground and see how it flows. Because I'm still convinced that at some point, it's if they have the weather the weather system we're hoping for, that the rain voxels are going to form a flash flood voxel that is going to wipe out a town. I just know it's going to happen. That's going to be great. It will be incredibly cool. cool. (laughs) Not that I'm being a dick about it. Anybody who lives in that town, Omid. But... um, (laughs) (laughs) Could be any town. No, it's... uh, The water thing... I I have seen some voxel simulations for water on YouTube, and... uh, it's beautiful. It looks just gorgeous the way it flows, and I'm hoping that they're using the same sort of engine techniques in this game too. Um, but yeah, you know, having a, you can set yourself up with a really nice idyllic lake and a nice little house next to the lake, and dig out the lake yourself, and then just fill it up with water. Maybe have a waterfall flowing into it. It could make some beautiful scenery with this game, mm-hmm. just just like that in itself, without even doing anything else. Without it being an MMO, without it being anything else, it's just a nice building game that you could get into and do all this. And Smooth Love's uh, comment of like underwater makes me think that at some point you could like dive down into a lake and dig out deep enough that you could then dig upwards again and create like a little air pocket cave that you could climb into, mm. hollow that out, and nobody would be able to see that your house you had to enter it from underwater. You know, I think that or or somebody was saying uh, the glass that I was talking about earlier. You can make a glass dome underwater and then make some sort of like uh, Atlantis type of city underwater, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or where uh, Jar Jar Binks comes from, that kind of thing. <laughs> no, no, that's not more along the lines of Rapture, no. but whatever. yeah, <laughs> yeah, Rapture. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <No problem>. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. All right, so. Yeah, that's great. That pretty much covers all of our topics that we wanted to talk about tonight. Let's go ahead and move on into our question and answer time. And then let's see. Q&A time. Quat. Q&A time. Quat. 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 All right, so, uh, Tobrin, you want to be our Q&A question reader tonight? Okay. Scroll all the way up. If it goes far enough up. Okay. Uh, first of all, Coin and Cleavage asks, where the heck is Zaphos? I miss Zaphos. Oh, we did that earlier. <laughs> yeah. Zaphos, yeah, he's got the goat Sorry. legs and the cow breasts. Um, Jedi Master Burst asks, what founder packs did we get? Oh. Uh, yeah. I got the uh, Trailblazer. Mm-hmm. You get as well. Blazing Trails and Racing Snails. Well, I got it as well, so it's just trending so, without one. Okay, listen, everybody, we're going to start a fundraising <laughs> right no, now. No, we're not. We're going to raise no, money. We're, <laughs> we're going to raise money for Trendane's Trailblazer pack. I don't know how we're going to do it. We're going to start a, a no. Kickstarter. No. No. <laughs> Sounds like a char. Yeah. You're we're going to get I it do, for him. I do that a lot. <laughs> hey, uh, Omid, you said that in, in or uh, maybe it wasn't you, maybe it was uh, Georgeson who said that they do want to have abilities for people to gift these packs. So let us know when we can gift these packs. We're going to get a gift for Trendane. It's so easy to get those two confused, you know, Georgeson and Omid. They just they look just so much alike. Like from yeah. the from the um, just to, I forgot to mention it earlier when they were doing the round table. My one one of my favorite parts was right at the beginning before they actually started, and you could see Dave wiggling his fingers out of the table. <laughs> <laughs> Jazz hands. Yeah. yeah, you can tell Sorry. they're they're uh, geeks like us. Yeah, um, and it was nice to see. It was nice to see Colette. Yeah, this is nice to see Colette. I haven't seen her too much, so that was good. And she handled the boys well. She's got to be. She's got to be busy. I mean, now the now the forums have launched and everything. We need right. to get her some Wonder Woman braces, so every now and again she just bang and pops them both and shuts yep. them up. <laughs> so, Wonder anyway, Woman. Carry on. All right, carry on. Carry on. Okay, uh, I'm probably gonna murder this person's name, but Valerine, um, do you think ice blocks will melt in the desert? Ooh. I'm gonna say yes, just straight off the bat. 
I would too, but I don't know. I haven't seen anything that has interactive ability yet. Like, I've seen them put like lava in a, in like a pit, but I didn't see it like melting the rock around it or anything like that. I mean, I don't know if that's built into it yet. Have we heard anything about that yet? Don't believe we have. Wasn't that in Dave's Forge? That was basically just a lava texture, and, yeah. or where there's actually coals instead of lava. Maybe, but I don't think it's. Uh, and you can be able Maybe to carry it has buckets a lot of, of lava. Material you interact with. Mm. Like so if you put it on wood, wood yeah, burst, burst into flames. I don't know. I, I think that would be I'm really gonna, epic, but uh, I'm going to be controversial and okay. say I I actually hope not. You want um, it to be more for just skin up like a big ice palace in the desert. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or at least to be able <laughs> to do? use it to be able to use it as a material within a build. I think you know having that option. Um, you know, it, it increases the amount of stuff that is possible. You know, whereas if if you just have it so you can't use ice in a desert, you know, to me that that takes a big chunk of possibility here's, out. Of here's the what game. Uh, here's what Locke wants. He wants an ice castle in the desert with lava fountains flowing over the sides of the castle. I want an ice statue of Omid in the desert with lava coming out of its eyes. <laughs> And just burning all the people in the town around it. Mm. <laughs> oh god! Ice, and ice, dry in the, ice. Yes, ice in the desert is called water. Yes, thanks, Dines. Raz. Okay, uh, next question. Okay, from Grimward. If Ladmark is free to play, do you think people will make fifty accounts just to get fifty plots? Yes. Yeah. I've read yeah. that. Sp several yeah. people are already talking about doing that exact thing. They're going to get 100 plots and get them all together so they can own like a half the continent or something. They'll have measurements against that, surely. You, well, they, you, won't be able to, like, you won't be right up hard against somebody. Like Your plot is not going to touch somebody else's that close, so they can't build right up against you. There's, there's supposed to be a good amount of distance between each one. What, what do you think there, yeah, Trendane? Was... No, it's just not touching. It's... Oh. Not touching. Not touching. <laughs> I think I, I responded to something about this on the on the on the forum. People people were talking about it, and all I could think was, how does that affect me? If someone did want to do that, if someone did want to make fifty accounts and put fifty plots together, like, does that affect what I'm doing? Does that? Does each one have to have that, a unique email address assigned to it? Assigned to it? Or does it does it stop me well, doing I anything? Suppose it would, you know, if you've got to still go out and explore and find all these materials, some mm. you might not find on your plot. You might have to move around a bit. And then if someone's got like half the continent covered just for themselves, you're not going to be able to dig there at all unless you specifically ask this person. You Which is it's going to be a land like, grab. Oh. It's going to be like back in the old Wild West when they just like take <laughs> off and whatever you see, you can you can own. Just expand. I, mean, I, I don't know, I've heard them say so many times if you don't like where you are, you can just pick up and move. Yeah, they did and say that. it seems that. like all the worlds are going to be sort of procedurally generated, and it, it sounds like, like there's going to be a lot of space. You know, it's, it's an MMO, it's not It's not built for, you know, a hundred people. It's not like we're going to run out and it'll be like the suburbs, you know, it's not like we've all got a little <laughs> 10 by 10 plot we're all on top of each other. It's I just think that's that's my thing. It's like how how does it affect what I do? Like let's say I was on a continent where someone had done that and they'd taken half of the continent. Like surely that space would have just been taken by other players anyway. So how does it how does it affect me? The fact that it's just one person that's done that. I know be more than one though. It might be like fifty, fifty people with fifty accounts from fifty plots. You know, well, yeah. that's going to be a All lot right. of space. That produces Shakespeare. No, wait, that's monkeys. And <laughs> that's monkeys, yeah. Yeah, um, <clears throat> and Coin and Cleavage had a good point, is they, they can just procedurally generate a new part. Like, So say somebody yeah. does take up, yeah. take the time to make 100 counts with 100 different email addresses just so they could have 100 different plots all linked together. <clears throat> so what? Then you just walk through their land or whatever, go around it. I've worked it out. What's that? This is how it'll affect my life. I'll sit here and do this. <laughs> <laughs> His character will sit there and just clap. At the guy's border for an hour. I think at some I don't point. Care. I got the Trailblazer pack I paid to win already. <laughs> yeah, you won. <laughs> they can't win with all their free accounts I paid. I should win. <laughs> Have them all shut down. Ban them. <laughs> See you, Shaylin. Sorry, Shaylin had to go. See you. The, uh, 
I mean, eventually, I think if you walk far enough, you will bump into a SimCity server, mm -hmm. and then everything crashes. So, <laughs> <laughs> what SimCity? I mean, the the amount of land that's in SimCity is such a tiny, minuscule amount compared to what's going to be in EverQuest next landmark, because it's like a plot like this big in SimCity. So for this for this one factor, I am going to beg, beg everyone at Sony. Please, for the love of insert deity's name here, test your shit before you go live. Please. Well, that's what we're doing. We're testing it for them. We're there, we, we've we got they got a huge pool now of testers, much bigger than than your normal uh, department that you would have. I mean, how many people worked at EA where you worked, Trendane? To deal with that. Yeah, that were just testers. That's all they did. That was test. that was at Maxis. That was like, okay. 50 miles away from where I was working. The, the the section that I was in, there were eight of us. Okay. And when all that shit went down and everything crashed, it was our job to deal with it. Right? Nice. So you got the fingers and pointed at you. Eight, eight, all eight of you. Yeah. Like eight uh, people could fix that. Yeah. Much overtime. Yeah. Much gnashing of teeth for sure. Um, yes. Yeah. The... Uh, <laughs> Now, we're talking about 800,000 people, maybe, or maybe 80,000 people or more are probably uh, going to be doing this testing for Sony. So that's great. You know? We're all testing it together. It lo looking at chat, I think it's important to to reiterate, you know, we, it, it is, I know Trendown said it earlier, but it is, we are going to be testing it. It will break. There will be things that won't work. It'll crash, and when you load back in, you know, it won't have you know, it won't have saved something that you've done. You know, we can we can expect rollbacks and stuff. So here's what you, they need not, to do. It's it's not the game. <laughs> right, right. But here's what they need to do to make it the game, okay? Because there is no incentive for a beta tester that is witnessing a bug to do anything other than just skip over it. Oh, I fell through the world over there, so I'm just going to walk this way next time because I'm, I'm being inconvenienced right now because I want to play. Uh, so make it where they have achievements, like, have an achievement system for beta testers that if they find bugs that are verified bugs, they get, like, some kind of little award. And if they, the more they find, then they could unlock higher levels of that award. Like... Before they do that, they okay. need to go to my YouTube channel and watch my L2QA series so that they know that. what the hell they're looking for. <laughs> Actually, everybody, seriously, truly, if you really want to get into that, uh, Trendane has a great series talking about how to become a beta tester or learn a, a Q and A tester at a company yeah. like EA or something like that, and it's uh, three videos, four videos, three, three, uh, and they they talk how how to do that. And after I was done with that, I was like, oh, I want to go do that myself, <laughs> you know. Um, no, uh, but anyway, the uh, the fact is, is I think if Sony did pull in some kind of thing like that, that it might it'd be an incentive for players to then try to find bugs. Like, yeah. oh, look, you know what, that, that tree's kind of off the ground a little bit over there? What's up with that? It's floating in the air, so let me report that bug. And then if enough of them get found, then you, uh, or even if you find one, you get an achievement, beta bug test or bug squash or something that you can show off as an achievement. I think that would be great. You could call it swatter, but I think that means something different in England than it does. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. It was a school <laughs> swat, it? weren't you? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Why did it take you guys so long to figure that out? Never mind. Next I'm not question. Going there. I, and yes, next question. Uh, the, the next swatter, question. My Metallica for Life 77 asks For someone not heavy into MMOs who's only played some Swarter, what does EverQuest Next offer that's different to other MMOs? Oh, sir, if you've only played The Old Republic. <laughs> you poor bastard. <laughs> poor, poor. <laughs> sad, sad bastard. All right, real quick before we answer that, is everybody did the did the sound just start crackling for everybody? Go ahead and speak, you guys. That was the sound of my heart breaking. <laughs> oh no, the reason I'm saying that is uh, the last time I did this stream well, the other day, we did uh, our Star Citizen stream, and right when my screen flashed black, it started crackling across the board. Sound is fine. Sound went wonky. That's just me. Okay, cool. No, it's fine. I don't hear any crackling, but the the people, the viewers, were complaining about it last time. Okay, go ahead. Continue on. What were we talking about? <laughs> about how the... the guy yeah, ask, ask, <laughs> yes, he only played Swotar. Now, actually, oh, yeah. now Star Wars The Old Republic had some really groundbreaking, innovative things to it. 
but they did never they never came through with them like they never fully fleshed them out they were sort of like oh this is great and and for one of the things was you were supposed to be able to fly your ship that you earned through the, the quest system or the, the uh yeah you finished it. <laughs> what Omid's question, how is your name Ratonga for life, and you've only ever played Swotor? Sorry. I, just oh. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, <laughs> the uh, the um, the ships that you earn, you're supposed to be able to fly them and do, like, missions in space. You know, shoot down other craft and everything like that. They just now, I think last week, released that add-on to where you can now fly your ship in space and, and do space battles. That's really bad that three years after the game comes out that it's just now getting space battles. So um, that's why I think personally that SWOTOR just didn't quite uh, kind of live up to the to the, the hype that it had done. And, you know, Bioware does a pretty good job with uh, stories. The story was beautiful. I loved all the characters. The stories were great. Other than that, it fell on its face. So what do you guys think? Oh god, for me, Star Wars was just an unmitigated disaster <laughs> of MMO design. It was basically they took World of Warcraft and put a Star Wars skin on it. It was badly optimized, and it was you know the the netco was terrible. Um, Auction house. This is like to the point where I I had a Jedi Guardian, and my rotation, um, my tanking rotation was exactly the same as my prop warrior from World of Warcraft, <laughs> with the same abilities with the same cooldowns. I just had a lightsaber, and that was it. And I had to be a human, which mm -hmm. annoyed the hell out. Of me. I had to be human shape, which annoyed the hell out of me as well. Right. But the thing with Star Wars, the really big innovation that Star Wars did, that they spent an absolute, Bioware spent an absolute ton of money on, and it's what they made their name on with their single player RPGs, was this whole single player storyline that they put through the game, and it was the thing that they were really, really proud of, and it was the, that is the exact opposite of what you should be focusing on when you make an MMO. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. single player storyline is irrelevant. It does not matter. Like, okay, it's an enjoyable experience, but once people have done it, then they, and they left. feel like they've finished. Then they, you know, they, there's nothing, there's nothing left for them. It doesn't. That leveling experience is not the reason that people mm. play MMOs and separating people in that way, constantly. So you just feel like you're alone throughout this whole journey. Even if you're playing with other people, there's still moments where you just have to go off by. You have to kind of go, oh my. Uh, my store is here, so I'm just yeah, going go to gonna go in here, and then the person that you've met and done a couple of mission quests with just goes, oh, okay, uh, I'll, I'll go and do this thing then. Mm -hmm. And then you part ways, so it's just this, this thing that they've put all this time and effort and energy into is separating players right. in their massively multiplayer game. It's just... It What's wrong does with not that? Compute. Yeah. <laughs> not compute. Oh, God. Okay, so that's another game altogether. That's Swotor. Now, what was the other one he said as an example that he's played? He didn't. No, that was it. That oh, that was it. Okay. That's all he's played with Swotor. Okay, so EverQuest has a very rich, long history. Like, it was the very first three-dimensional MMO that you could play. There were other ones before it. There was Meridian 59, Ultima Online, uh, which was isometric, but it wasn't three-dimensional. And EverQuest next was... Or EverQuest, sorry. EverQuest was the very first game that took you into a 3D world. Now, in the beginning, it was really this tiny little square that's all you saw was 3D. And everything else was just buttons. But then eventually they opened up the UI and all that. But... It is where the whole MMO genre started. So EverQuest Next is just another iteration of the story. We're moving ahead. We're changing the lore a little bit. Not we. Uh, they're changing the lore a little bit, kind of doing a reboot on the lore. Uh, and it's all kind of merging together in sort of a different way. But if you want to play sort of the original MMO type of s game, then this that's what EverQuest Next is going to be. But, of course, with modern updated graphics and the, the whole voxels and all that stuff. And also, I think because it's um, it's going to be more of a sandbox experience than yes. a lot of MMOs are at the moment. I think it's it's definitely so, got that going for it. He might not know what sandbox means because you we just you just mentioned it, and he said he's only played uh, Swotor, which was a a uh, theme park game. So, what can you explain the difference between a theme park and sand and uh, sandbox? Sandbox is where cats go poop. <laughs> As always, Trendane, with the excellent commentary. <laughs> So what is Sorry, a sandbox? Okay. What what's a sandbox game? 
<laughs> God, am I talking here? A uh, sandbox game. In a theme park MMO, you, you level, you go through the story, you, you get to max level, and then once you're there, there's kind of, um, there's a track that you follow, there's, you know, there's certain things, there's a, there's a raid, and you progress through the raid to the story to, you know, defeat the final boss of the, you know, the current, you know, expansion or whatever. And that's what you do. There's like there's a standard progression, and you're always moving in the same direction, and you're working towards you know the the same end goal as everyone else. Whereas in a sandbox game, you know the idea is you kind of um, you're expected to pick your own path a lot more. Now, as part of the development for that, it means that the goals have to be a lot more spread out. If you look at a game like Eve Online, you go in, and it doesn't really direct you to do anything specifically. But there's just a ton of stuff that is possible and is like a long-term goal for you to stretch for. So whereas a theme park is a is a more kind of directed experience, and you're always kind of showing the path and you're following the, you're following the story and going along. A sandbox is much more, you know, there's a lot more onus on you as a player to choose what you want to do and then you know go out and make that happen. And they you know they they both can be great, but they're fundamentally different, and I think they appeal to different people. Like if it's very sandboxy, I imagine the start of EQM, the Reddit is going to be plagued with people going, "There's nothing to do." I can't figure out where to go to next. Do. Yeah. Where's where's the where's the raid? Where's how, what's what's end game? I, how I, mine I poor fish? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks thanks for that. Um, all right. So that's the difference. So uh, you know, this is going to be a sandbox game, and and it's going to be kind of wide open. I just part, started playing a new sandbox game tonight. Um, X Rebirth, which is uh, pretty cool so far, and it yeah, it, it doesn't cool. have a, what's that? I, I call it a stream for that. It looks really good. Yeah, it looks pretty, pretty, very pretty looking game. Okay, so um, let's move on to the next one because actually we have like fifty questions now, and we're we're taking yeah. like twenty minutes per question, so we probably should move it along. <laughs> so okay, it'll take um, three days why? to upload this video. Later. Yeah. sorry, Teddy. <laughs> Bartel Delay asks, "There's, of course, some." Sort of question of how the plots will be done. How do you think they'll manage them? Do you think they have a model similar to Second Life? So that's in regards to the plots. Yeah. Um, so I didn't play Second Life more than I just I walked around it a little bit once and that was about it. I didn't play it a lot. I did. You did? I, did, I didn't build anything, but I was there. Okay, so tell us a little bit about what. What are your thoughts with Second Life compared to EverQuest Next? Um. Well. Landmark. I haven't really played Landmark yet, so... Well, what you see from it, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and I also haven't been on Second Life recently. Um, it's it's gotten, from what I understand, a lot better. The models... I think that's one of the biggest differences, is that with Second Life, you can not only build the the environment, the terrain, and, and everything else, but you can also build the characters. You can build virtually anything. I mean, if you want to build an entirely new race, I mean, we've got, if you go over to the furries section of Second Life, which mm -hmm. is considerable, um, it's huge. And they are building, you know, you used to have these very primitive, you know, like werewolf, you know, geometries and stuff. And they've gone through to the point where they're building dragons that are the size of, of you know, houses that, you know, just, you can log in and that's your avatar and you walk around and you fly around and you do whatever you want to mm. you know they built b these bizarre griffins that are a combination of a peregrine falcon and a snow leopard and you know just these, these really fascinating variations on a theme you you have that level of freedom in second life to build your character to look the way you want to i mean um uh you uh lock, lock. you um <laughs> you said you know, you, one of the things that one of the problems you, you didn't want to be human shaped. You know, in Second Life, you don't have to. You know, you can make yourself whatever the hell you want to be. And I mean, you are only limited by what you can imagine and what you can build. You know, with with um, what is this thing we're talking about? Uh, EverQuest. Ever uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which of us is sick? Uh, no, it's just there's a history of that memory disease. Um, Alzheimer's. Yes, there's a history of that. It's always so ironic when I can't remember the name of that. Anyway, um, <laughs> there's uh, 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 with with EverQuest, you know, you're not going to be able to, you know, just completely alter your character. You know, you're going to be a Karen. You're going to be a Dark Elf. You're going to be, you know, whatever. Um, I will be a Karen. Oh yes. Um, but you know, that's what you're limited to. You can't make, you know, a Karen Tar. You know, like a Centaur, but it's but entirely in, Karen. You know, it's, in. You can do uh, that in 
And Second Life, though, but you can't knock buildings down, and, and or can you build? You probably could. Oh, really? Okay. If it's designed, but it's to, not to function that way. It's not an MMO. It's more of a social place. Largely, yeah. But I mean, once once you build like uh, a club or something like, there's there's a whole section that's devoted to to vampires, mm. and um, it's away from the first because they're like those people are sick. Bite me. It's <laughs> um, <laughs> whatever. Um, you're dressed like a slut. No wonder all these vampires want you. Anyway. Um, Again, we're going to take another twenty minutes on this question. Um, once you've once you've built it the way you mm-hmm. want to, there will be things called pose balls, and you can like go up to a pose ball and you can say, "Okay, activate the animations." Or what is the list of animations that are connected to this pose ball? And if one of them is, you know, tail sweep, demolish building, then you will sweep your tail and demolish the building mm. if it's been designed to do that. Um, this yeah. brings up a good point. As, uh, Second Life was the very first virtual world that had a sale of a million dollars or something like that for an item inside, or was it an uh, island, like an island inside the game? Yeah, I uh, believe so. And so that that begs the the question that in EverQuest Next Landmark, at least, uh, do you guys think that there's a potential to make some really good money, like with with some kind of virtual whatever you build? You build there's Sauron's potential. tower. Or, I think, but I don't think it will ever go as high as a million. It might. I could be entirely wrong about this, but I don't think... I mean, a million has got to have a lot of dedication. Like, a lot. I don't, I don't, if everyone can open up and just find the piece of land they want, mm-hmm. and they can claim it for themselves, unless someone finds well, some what like, if, what cave if, well, listen, diamonds... What if there's this rare, this really rare island off the coast that only that, the one guy with 100 accounts logged in and got, got that island? He owns that <laughs> island. You know, unlike, but I guess it's a little different in this game because if you wanted an island bad enough, you could just literally dig a hole around an area and fill it with water, and now you have an island. You know, I mean, if you if you had the time sure. and inclination to do that, so it's not exactly the same. And I mean, you want to talk about you know somebody with the dedication to to spend the time to make. I mean, look at that that the, the guy that made that that one um, mod for Skyrim that was that entire island with all mm-hmm. of those quests on it, and if he oh, could yeah. do that. You know, you could get a team of people that they could make some amazing stuff in EverQuest Next. Yep. And yeah, you could probably sell it for a million dollars if you got it, you know, to the level of like what that guy did by yeah. himself. It's pretty neat. Sure, I suppose. All right, let's let's get on to the next one. Oh yeah, it's me reading out. Yeah, you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your question. Why is everyone looking at me? Oh uh, crap! Where was I? Okay, Armbuck says, do you think we'll be able to build villages in EverQuest Next Landmark? If we can do that, do you think we'll be able to populate it with NPCs like bakers, smiths, guards, etc.? Give your thoughts. Yes. 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 I hope so okay. as well. Next question. Next question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the quick ones are always so nice. Yes, but it's actually are. like that. You will be able to do that. Already, the, the, the devs have already said you will be able to make your own NPCs. So yes. Uh, I, think it'll, I think it'll go a lot further than that as well. Probably. Um, I'm going to murder this person's name, but Arfiridutur? Yes, uh, perfect. Uh, really? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, honestly. <laughs> no um, world PvP on EverQuest next, yes or no? For me, absolute yes. No. But those guys, different story. Yeah, we're, we're one of those guys. I, I say no. Oh, we're split down the middle. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, the, the question again. P- open world PvP. Like we were talking about Daisy. Yes, it's exciting and the whole thrill of the kill is there. But if I'm just sitting there crafting a piece of bread, <laughs> you know, I'm sitting there. Mull- <laughs> so the guy doing- just comes up and says, "You know what? That's die. Really Backstab. Yeah. You're dead, and you flush bread." Do you remember uh, in Monty Python the Holy Grail? The uh, <laughs> he just runs through and just randomly starts stabbing people. You know, it's like <laughs> just like charging through, like ah, ah, ah you know, they're having a wedding, and he just goes and kills everybody. Lancelot's on the rampage. So I mean, yes, I think it's okay to have a world PvP, but if you just want to be left alone and have your little wedding and have people dancing around and singing, then <laughs> you know. Well, maybe you could have like a mode where you can turn it on and off. Well, I guess then. And then yeah. what's the incentive to have it on? Right, you just want yeah, to be left alone. It's, it's a disadvantage to have it. On, so no one, no one will have it on. Yeah, that's the problem with, with that. Like that's why, off, why like kind of ten percent increase in offense. A lot of times, <laughs> when when we're we're seeing conversations like this on the forums and whatnot, 
or on on YouTube or what have you. A lot of times people are like, and I see this a lot with Star Citizen as well. For me, it's the same argument on both games, is that you know, while I don't want to partake in PvP, I'm not going to tell you you can't have it. Yeah, you know? exactly. And for yeah. for me, that's the big difference. Is a lot of the guys who are saying, you know, it, it, there has to be PvP, and if you don't like it, go play something else. It's like, see, I'm not telling you you can't play the game just because we don't like the same things. Mm -hmm. You are the one being a dick and telling me that you know <laughs> it's just. Mm. Yeah, yes. I, I have I have an idea for this if anyone's interested. Go ahead, yes, sir. I uh, I did a video on this a while ago where I said why not? Um, I I don't think servers should be separated. I don't think you should have PvP servers and PVE servers. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't think that's good for the game. I think you want to get as many different types of players together as possible. Um, but at the same time, I, I don't think I don't think it should be free for all. Absolutely not. Um, it's not that type of game. Um, I don't think that it should just be like full open world, like kill anyone anywhere. I don't think it's that type of game. I think the best way to go about it would be to have an area of the world which was open world PvP, and within that, it had um, items or materials that were useful to PVE players, because then. You get the situation where the PVPers get to go in and fight, and there's a real there's a real reason and there's a real cause for them to do that because there's something very valuable um, within that area that the PVE players want. And then maybe yeah, you can switch that around as well and say suck that. at PVP. What like, exactly? You know, there, there will so be players gives, who just you know, like it gives us people to get just it. roll over all yeah. the time, but at the same time, it <laughs> and makes, then just because you make dominated. But that's the thing, you're making PvP useful and relevant to PvE players who are the majority, so even if they don't want to PvP themselves, it still makes it an important part of the culture of the server, you know, they'll want to have a strong PvP presence because they want the things that you get um, from doing that, that open world PvP. Would that's, that be the only place no, that these yeah, particular things are available? Um, I, think, I think it should be. See, I can see them being available in you know outside of that area, but nowhere near to the the volume that is available within that area. Mm. So that you know, I mean, if you want to absolutely find some, yes, that's the easiest place to go to get it. And then yeah. yes, you have to deal with it. If you have no interest whatsoever in any kind of PvP, it should still be available outside of that area, just not in the in the amounts right. that you're going to find inside. The thing, I mean, the the difficulty is you, you would you would get into because you know players optimize towards boredom. You would just get massively slanted servers where everyone was in one particular faction, so they didn't have to worry about fighting anyone in, <laughs> in the open world area. Uh, that's you know that that's the problem with that. No, I was looking at this. I don't know what that is. That's that's <laughs> Omid's avatar from Google Plus. Oh, <laughs> it's what what I really want to see is I want to see a system of open world PvP that actually that has a, a positive impact on the world. Omid, is that from your show? I think that I think that is. I think that's from uh, uh, Huntic. Is that what? It, is that what? Yeah, he is? says. Yeah, it's a picture from him as a yeah. cartoon he was working. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Sorry. But people said that Omid had to be in the middle, so that's why I put him there. Oh. He's the meat in the sandwich. It's uh, where, it belongs. <laughs> where it belongs. Next question? Next question. <laughs> well, baby, there you go. Toby. Toby. Oh, Toby, yeah, Toby. Yeah. <laughs> I was just waiting. Where's Wake the up. <laughs> you had one job. <laughs> oh, that's good. I was so bad. <laughs> Who invited him? Hey, uh, I met myself. <laughs> um, Shadow Hope asks, "Why do you think they've only released enemy of my enemy on mobile devices? Do I get to see an Android phone to enjoy the lore in the future? Do I need an Android phone?" Sorry. So they're really asking, "Why is it only available on mobile?" Um, well, it's, it's not. I think yeah. you can download it as a PDF, right? It was it was released on mobile, but it's not only available. On right, I, I I read it in the P, as a PDF, I think. Uh, I think it, I think it was an experiment of you know something interesting to do. It came shortly after they asked the question about you know how we liked law to be delivered. So I think you know it's it's part of an interesting internal sort of ideas about you know delivering it in different ways and you know seeing how people react to it. But I mean it's not. 
Well, Mean says it came it in PDF. It released on one platform, didn't mean like it, it was blocked from the rest of the internet. Right, right. No. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, uh, Mean said it's a PDF, so if it's a PDF, you can open up PDFs on your Android phone without a problem. All right. All right. One of my first lectures at, at university, the uh, the professor said, "Beware of PDF files on the internet." I was the only one that laughed. <laughs> a, room, <laughs> a room of two hundred people. <laughs> uh, PDF files, I get it. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> uh, Miss Jade four twenty asks: EQ one and EQ two both had epic classes. Do y'all think EQ two will have epic weapons? Um, if so, how would they pull that off with multi-classing? I think weapons, in my opinion, are going to just be more like skins, right? Yeah, if they're, if they're trying to avoid the gear grind, then it would just be a special skin like they had in Guild Wars 2. I mean. Right, because it's, it's more of a... This is all kind of... There's there is no level in this game. This is all a horizontal progression. And as far as gear goes, there isn't... I mean, maybe I could be wrong, but I don't think there's going to be that many plus 20 swords of Vorpal Death or something like that that you're going to find. I think from from what I've seen, uh, it looks like there's going to be a lot more customization available. And with, with the player studio, you know, you're going to be able to buy gear and stuff, which means inherently there'll be less prestige attached to how your gear looks. Um, you know, maybe maybe there could be things like you know that change certain spell effects. That that could be interesting. But I think you know uh, they want people to they want people to look how they want to look. That seems to be. The direction it's going in, mm-hmm. um, so maybe maybe it'll be more things like achievements or, you know, what color your fireballs are, <laughs> things like that. Uh, that would be the differentiating factors. <laughs> but who knows? Who knows? They, like, you know, they they're probably still discussing it <laughs> at the same time we are. Uh, I guess Trendane has blue fireballs. Hey. hey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Next question. Um, God, I'm gonna brutally murder this name again. Go Margie, Margie Maggi says, "Do you think the Thunder Packs will get us any special bonuses in EverQuest next as well? And do you think they should at this point?" They're gonna have. This is my opinion. They're gonna have more packs when EverQuest next comes out. Yeah, that's what I, I thought as well. I think they're gonna have a new, a whole new pack system. Because by then there'll be new people that are into the game or not in the game. You know, we might have all moved on. Who knows? I'm not saying we're going to, but. <laughs> But you know there could be new whole new groups, so they'll probably want to have a whole new set of packs. I think you should the the tra- the Trailblazer one probably should carry over in the uh, the Explorer. What? Squatter the one, pack. The one that we have. <laughs> just a squatter pack. You just go to somebody else's land and just sit there. Oh, I missed that. Is it in text or something? No, I just came up with it. Oh, okay. Copyright. Um, trend yeah, it, 2013. Yeah, you know, me just you know, says we're not planning it. Different yeah. games. Yeah, but he's not having anything maybe, transfer over. Maybe the title. The title. That's all I'm thinking. Uh, maybe yeah. the f- yeah. Um, right. That'd be nice. Next. Nice. Next. Brutally murdering this name again. Don't uh, worry about Ch- it. Bo- 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 asks any news about adding animals into EQ Next landmark so you could build a farm and zoo. Hmm, I didn't think about farm and zoo, but I was thinking there's definitely gonna be pets. You know, with 40 classes, we're going to have some pets. One of them will at least have a pet, I would yeah. assume. But it's like cows and chickens and goats? <laughs> You're a beast master with a cow. I want to see that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Send in a go- I've always thought like in in, in uh, World of Warcraft, right? You, you see these giraffe on the plains. Why couldn't you have like a giraffe pet? <laughs> you know? Do you know what those things are like when you meet them in person? I met one in person. <laughs> They're kind of boring, actually. That's because you never pissed him off. Oh, okay. no, I <laughs> piss off a giraffe who's 18 feet taller than me. Well, they have, they have this amazing karate kick ability. Their leg will move and your head just comes off your body. You have no clue. There's just, and it's, so it's, do you have past experience with this? How many times well, has your head been knocked head off by a giraffe? I have only twice. But it was it, the funniest thing I ever saw was... Yes, chat is fun. Getting diverted again. I, I was at the San Francisco Zoo doing a mascot appearance, and Joe Montana was there. He had his kid. His kid was holding a, a big sprig of you know leaves and stuff. Held the kid up, and the giraffe leans down. And this four foot long black tongue yeah. comes out and wraps around the thing. And the kid was. Ah! 
<laughs> it was hysterical. <sighs> now, uh, somebody's asked a question that kind of relates to this. Uh, will there be carryover bonuses? <laughs> relates to giraffes eating. Not giraffes, to giraffes, but to the question. To the question at hand. I'm trying to tr- re- re- get back on track. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Whoa, Nelly. Uh, will they carry over bonuses for long time account holders of EQ and EQ2 so like um, like they did with uh, Guild Wars 2 how they had the Hall of Monuments you guys think something like that maybe yeah maybe I don't, I don't know I'd like to see something similar to reward those players that have been here there, you know 10 years maybe I'm sorry that something. question just jumped to the head of the line but it was yeah. relating to the fact that we were just talking about you know whether or not you could have these uh Things carrying over from EverQuest. Yeah. Landmark. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I, I think it'd be nice. You know, if they if they announced it way in advance, like they did for Guild Wars as well. You know, it, it might get some people to jump into the original games, which is no bad no bad thing. <clears throat> you know, to maybe earn a couple of those rewards before before the game launches. Uh, you know, yeah, it'd be nice. All right, so also, we're going to have a. Tr- well. I, why, why not? Like why not? It's, it's one of those things. Isn't it? it doesn't. It doesn't affect. As long as it doesn't affect what I'm doing, mm-hmm. you know, why, why shouldn't they have something? Why why shouldn't they have a title that says, you know, they're old school EverQuest players and you know they've been supporting it for ages? And why shouldn't they have a different skin for a, you know, for whatever weapon they want? You know, just to to say just to that kind of I'm say a supporter. Thank, thanks yeah. for sticking with us, like. You know, come on board, guys. Get on, get on the new game. Get on EverQuest Next. That's what we're yeah. doing. At the same time, it gets a lot of people, you know, like myself, that have become interested in the franchise. You know, from the announcement of this game, you know, I, you know, I probably would go back and play a bit, maybe to collect a few things, see what's what before. I mean, I'll probably do it anyway, but <laughs> you know, it'd give me, give me a nice little, nice little bonus for doing that. All right. Uh, next question, I guess. Okay, from Top Geared asks, what special or unique props would you like to see added to the landmark? Hmm. Oh, okay, so it's a real quick question. I didn't really talk about it when we were doing this building thing, but voxels are only so big. Like, the smallest voxel you'll see here in a second is... Uh, Ted. Is Ted. <clears throat> and Ted is only like a... I don't know, like a... T- like, there's Ted right there. Anyway, so Ted's really small. And so you, I, I was saying before that, you know, you'll be able to build carts in this game and then, like get a horse and then you hook the horse up to the cart and all that but uh, yeah I don't think that they're going to be allowing you to build such small stuff so for that you're going to be able to craft things and they're calling them props so I'm, the reason I'm bringing all this up is because you were just saying about the props and some people might not know what we're talking about with props <clears throat> excuse me I'm still getting over this cold so uh, <laughs> exactly, the internet internet viruses uh, internet. so the props uh, the cool props in this game. I would like to see. I want a Game of Thrones throne. Oh, that'd be nice. Would that be cool for your for your your like big throne room you have in your castle? Yeah. A bit but uncomfortable you, in winter. Might be. It's all made of metal. <laughs> yeah, because you stick to it. That would be bad. So I get a nice I little know. lava fire in there. That's all. In the throne. <clears throat> throne room. Make it nice and toasty. All right, what what's your what do you think there, Trendane? <clears throat> what would About you like to see? No, what would you like to see? Oh, for um, a prop, special props. A freelancer? No, sorry, wrong game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you could probably almost build that. Probably out of voxels. Build one out of wood. Uh, uh, let's, I I would have to think about this for a really long time. So I'm okay. Out. <laughs> let's go to Tobrand. What do you think? I don't know. I, I just hope we'd have some sort of you know things we would expect. I, I I'm not really one for having something really ridiculously unique. Like I'm not really one for that. I don't know how other people feel about that. But I'm more for the generic stuff. Like uh, let's have kegs. Fence let's post. have bear rugs. Mm-hmm. Let's have a ram's head on the wall. I don't know. Just all that stuff that sort of fits with the genre is what I really want. You want and taxidermy of course, sci-fi stuff as well. You want taxidermy. Yes, taxidermy would be nice. Lots of different dead animals to mount. Actually, that could that could work its way into the economy very well because you could go to a lumber mill and get all the sawdust, and that's what you pack your your taxidermy with. Yeah, you could kill some rare dragon, bring it back, stuff it with sawdust, and then uh, sell it. All taxidermied. Mm-hmm. All right, that's one of the professions. I mean, 
Talk to your dev team. <laughs> See if we get that put in the game. Don't, don't talk to them. Tell them to put it in. <laughs> yes, we must have taxidermy. All right. Or if you really want to show off a giraffe's head. <laughs> With a big black, <laughs> long, long tongue. We have a have a lever so that the giraffe's head comes down, and if you push it too far up, of the giraffe, and it just blows its head out. I think it's the blood pressure, mm -hmm. but it's all whipped cream inside. All right. So Petapod says, "Uh huh," and uh, Omid says, "We'll get right on that." Okay. So I guess I guess our taxidermy <laughs> idea is shot right down. Confirmed. Confirmed. Someone screenshot quick. Yeah, screenshot. Taxidermy confirmed. Uh, okay, go ahead, uh, uh, Locke. What was yours? Oh God, um, specific <laughs> things. Yeah, that um, you'd like to see. I, I don't. I, I can't really answer that to be honest, because I think stuff that I'm gonna build is is all gonna be quite small scale kind of things, just just pissing about. I'm I'm not planning on really putting anything on the player studio. You know what what I want to what I'd really like to see props made is stuff that can be used in EverQuest next because that's working towards things, mm -hmm. but also. You know, props that props that can be used. You know, what I'm what I'm really looking forward to in Landmark, which is seeing you know what players can come up with in terms of creating I don't games think that, themselves. Uh, so props that support that. I don't you know, think players specific. are going to be able to make them. I don't think What's players that? are. I don't think players are going to be able to make mount. I make uh, props. I oh, think. Said yeah, they, said yeah, they will. will be able to make props. Oh well, uh, as far as I mean, they, they crafting, said, they, said they want it. They want it landmark to have all the tools that they're using to okay. make EverQuest next. So you know, we're gonna surely we're gonna be able to build props and items and you know NPCs and things. That I'm I'm kind of thinking, you know, like the Player Studio for Planetside Two, or you know, like um, the way people make items for Dota Two and stuff, but integrated within the game. So you've got. All the complicated, all the complicated back end, but through a kind of more user friendly interface. In the same way that that Landmark is, you know, it's complicated things happening, but with with kind of streamlined, more intuitive tools than you'd normally get. So I'm I'm assuming that that's going to carry over into. I mean, uh, hopefully someone will be able to tell me in chat if I'm totally off base, but. You know, I'm, I'm assuming that's that's the way it's going to go. You know, Dave Georgeson said a few times this week that they want the players to have the tools that the development team are using to build EverQuest Next, which to me means you know we'll, we'll be building all kinds of things, not not just buildings. But I kind of think I don't. Know, I kind of think they they can't because uh, props are more of like a 3D studio kind of thing, not not necessarily like a voxel. Well, so that, that's well, yeah, but it's still. It, it's a computer program that you, you manipulate objects in a 3D environment, and that's what we're doing with... I guess we'll have to see. So you build it out of TEDs, then you tell it to scale it down 75% or whatever, and you know, there you go. You've got your, you just build it on a large scale and then tell it to shrink it down to whatever <laughs> size. Yeah, I guess you probably could. <clears throat> All right. Go ahead there, Mr. Tobrin. Uh, Phantom X asks, Trove announces a voxel-based world, WoW announces a possible procedurally ge generated content and player-made content. Does that hurry up or change anything SOE does? Are those features going to dominate for the next 5 or 10 years? I think uh, right now SOE is like on the forefront of something big here. Mm -hmm. And I think what they're doing is, gonna, is going to last quite a while. I can see this game starting a whole new trend. And, and, and those other games, while they're great, they don't have the level of detail that EverQuest Next does. I mean, I've, I've played Cube World and I've played a few other voxel type games. And, and while they're cool, they don't necessarily have the same. Because this isn't just a voxel game, it's also a regular 3D MMO with a, a rendered, textured layer that goes on top of the voxels. So, what do you guys think? No answer? <laughs> I think I think it was it was inevitable that the the industry was going to go this way after after the success of Minecraft and you know players being more and more demanding. And I think we've you know I've heard that we're kind of getting to the point where graphical fidelity isn't really going to be taking any more <coughs> big leaps anytime soon. You know we've kind of got to that point where it's just not worth the investment anymore. Uh, to do that, you know, big studios have started losing money on games because they're putting so much into into these graphics, and then a game like Minecraft comes out of nowhere and just you know just proves that people aren't, people aren't as interested. Yeah, exactly. The the rise of like indie games and, and everything as well, I think, has been has been a, a big part of that. 
uh, multi-platforming I, th I think is is a big part of it as well but it's just I think it was an inevitable product of the way that the industry is going and I think you know it's it's an incredible an incredible field of possibilities <laughs> that lays stretched before us and we'll, we'll see all kinds of different ideas and innovations I think mostly based around being able to create content quickly and cheaply I think that's you know that's kind of seems to be the general thrust of the you know the way everything everything's going at the moment and I think that you know SOE have obviously um, really really grabbed that and ran with it and I think hopefully it will it'll really pay dividends for them later on down the line in EverQuest next or even you know possibly if we want to talk about the wild wild speculation perhaps later on we'll see um, a different type of landmark game being you know being used to create another you know, totally different game for SOE but you know using the tools that they've already built for landmark which then again cuts development costs for them and allows them to kind of pass that on uh, through the through the free to play model that they've been championing as well I could talk about this for hours but I'm going to stop Yeah now. I was going to say we got to stop <laughs> yeah. because we have I'm 12 so minutes sorry. we've got 12 minutes left to finish like 40 <laughs> questions so <laughs> Let's go real quick, the tour brand. Just start asking yes, questions. Yes, no, no, yes, bacon, uh, stone. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to skip these. Okay. We got twelve minutes, and then we're gonna be up to two hours, and we have to stop at two hours. So. Okay, Snowman Wilkie asks, "What type of economy do you expect to see for Landmark? Since it said you can put resources up in the player studio." Oh, it's gonna be an open economy. It's gonna be a lot like Eve. I think I think they'll make it as easy as possible for people to buy and sell to each other because mm -hmm. they want people to have access to the and things they're taking that they a want cut. to build. They're taking a cut every time, so it's fine. Yeah. Well, I think that that the like the auction house or whatever will deal with coinage, but if you're dealing with players who want to trade, like I have, you know, fifty tons of stone, I need wool. They will have to trade themselves. You won't be able to mm -hmm. use wool as currency on the thing. That would be my answer. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next. Mm -hmm. Best question. Phantom X once again asks, "What do you think about the build your own MMO comment? It seems to have passed over on most forums. Sounds amazing to me." I'm sorry, I couldn't understand that. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Speak <laughs> English. I'm sorry. <laughs> what do you think about the build your own MMO comment? It seems oh. to have passed over on most forums. Sounds amazing to me. Yes. Same. Yes. 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 I think I think that Dave Georgeson summed it up best when he said, "People hear something like that and it." You know, it, it sounds it sounds preposterous, doesn't it? And mm -hmm. I think, you know, Dave Georgeson said, you know, it's it's very much a I'll believe it when I see it. I think that's how most people because it's it's, I mean, it doesn't make any sense <laughs> like from from like any anything that we've seen before and the way that games work. Like how how could how could we how could I sit in here at my desk possibly, you know, be able to do that? And I think when people when people start seeing uh, the tools that they're implementing, hopefully. You know, people will get a better idea of how that will be possible, and I think uh, people will be very excited about that. Yep. All right. Go. Next. Okay. Top Gear asks, uh, "How solo friendly should EQN be? Solo to max tier, need to group to level res reasonably fast." I say very give, solo friendly. Give the player yeah. every option. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. Locked. Okay. No, so I, I guess we skip uh, lock. Okay. Uh, yeah, just skip me. No, no, it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Seriously, we'll be here all night. Um, I think people should be able to play by themselves if they want to be by themselves. But it is—it's a multiplayer. There's, you know, there's an M and a G in there. That's multiplayer game. Like the the whole game should be focused around people playing together. But you should, you know, if you just want to be by yourself, then you should have things to do by yourself. Yep. Or or you should go and play unwritten. Never mind. Let's move on. Move on. <laughs> I think there's so many single player games. Skyrim is brilliant. Build your own single player game in Landmark, mm -hmm. and then you have to. And then invite everybody over to play it. Toby, go. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> go. Okay, Salgar asks, which race from EQ lore would you like to enjoy to play that is yet to be announced? Sharklock. Ixar. <laughs> um, I'm I'm playing a dwarf. I don't care. <laughs> I just want to say Ixar because that's I was. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but they, they've shown the dwarves. Ratanga? Yeah. Yeah. Owl bear. Yeah, I'm trying to. I can't even remember what has been confirmed and what hasn't been yet. I mean, we've had. Dark elves, dwarves, and, and uh, humans. Yeah. And uh, Karen. Is that, uh, is that all that's been confirmed? confirmed as well, aren't they? What's that? Pretty sure half arcs are. 
Um, yeah, I guess like, there's one or two pitchers here. I want to play a Karen. Well, orcs, orcs as enemy mobs have, but have we had a picture of a half orc? Oh yeah, ogres. That's another one. Yeah, ogres. That'd be cool. Okay. Fippy dark bar. Okay, go. Okay. Uh, Nurgle Bear asks, "What type of other liquids do you think will be in landmark other than lava and water?" <laughs> Wood. <laughs> Trend day. Wood. Small churches. <laughs> I'm waiting for a urine voxel. Yeah. So that, I can, so that I can tan, you know, hides into leather. Dragon piss. No, that's gross. <laughs> okay. Beer. Um, yeah, beer. Beer. Strong beer. Um, Ra651 asks, do you think land will be the same procedurally generated again after a wipe or remain the same? I think each server is a procedurally generated server, right? They said you can go to different servers and see different landscapes. Like, it's... The biomes will be the same, like... This is a snowy biome. This is a jungle biome. But and each of them is going to change as people go through and modify them. So. Mm -hmm. But if they were white, I can't imagine why they would be wiped. Really, I mean, once after release, I can't. Yeah, imagine yeah. Why I don't they think they're going to wipe them after release. Anyway. All right. Okay. Snilius three two eight asks. I really want to explore the life of consequence theme a bit more. In EQ1, if you kill the druid more than a couple of times, all the rangers and druids would hate you. Same as trying to keep with the Tunar faction. All the Tunar aligned rangers and druids would set out of a raid. What are your thoughts on that? That's evil. <clears throat> Omid, you're evil. <laughs> oh, wow. It yeah. has a cruel sense of humor. That is a very cruel it's, comment. Wait a minute, you, you work for Sony and you had to wait till today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That that's the kind of shit that happens. We have never mind. Never mind. Uh, um, <laughs> I don't care. He's he's been playing landmark for ages. <laughs> um, can wait station. What was I gonna say? I forget now. You were gonna yeah. say next question. Next question. Oh, did we answer that next one? Question. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think we did. I think it would be very. I think it would be very very interesting if they did react accordingly to whatever your your oh, reputation yeah, is with that faction. I want to see I factions. I think that would be very cool. They yeah, definitely have to have factions. Okay, go. Okay. Song Hunter asks what props Wait, what about props that I've made through material based on trade skill? What about them? Yeah, what about them? They're nice. <laughs> <laughs> um I see no I mean oh. I I I'm not getting the question really, but Me neither. I think I presume that. I think it's, it, go he's ahead, talking Locke. about having having a crafting skill that you need to make certain props. Okay. Is that the question? I, I could know. see that in EQN, but in Landmark, uh, no. No. Skip. Go. <laughs> they talked about um, uh, having to find uh, plans for to build to make props yourself, though. Oh yeah, yeah. They yeah, did say that. Have, so that's probably what that's coming under. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, final question. That was fast. Oh really? We got through. Okay, great. Yeah. Perfect uh, so, timing. Bartail Delight asked, um, do you think voxels will have physics? If he creates yes. a sphere voxel, will it roll down the hill and interact with other voxels? Yes. So far, no. I, what? <clears throat> Sorry. I want to see it, but it might not be implemented yet. Because we never got shown a sphere on, on the stream, so... Right, but they have... Um, the, the the things in the sky... You can build in the sky. Like I saw, I saw this one guy was building this huge thing just in the sky. So I don't know how physics are going to actually work in Landmark. Not probably not as much as in NeverQuest Next. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things. Hope hopefully, hopefully it'll be in. But I'm I'm kind of hoping both. Like you can choose whether something floats or, you know, so it, so all objects that you place just stay where you place them until you know you just select that Trigger thing them. to be affected yeah. by physics. Because yeah. you would you would need, especially if you're building something that's going to go into EQ next, you've got to test it with full physics if it's supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. Especially like doors are dropping. Diana Jones, if uh... yeah, traps, <laughs> all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. So that's it, huh? That's it. All right, awesome. That's all the questions. All right. <clears throat> all right, real quick, let's go around the room. Uh, Locke, tell us a little bit about you, your channel, all that stuff. Go. Um. Hello. 
Hello, the internet. Uh, I'm Lock. I've got a channel on YouTube, youtube.com slash Lock6Time. You can follow me on Twitter at Lock6Time. I talk a lot about EverQuest Next. I go on for far too long. But if you enjoy discussion, send me a message somewhere on EQ Nexus. Um, if you like, I'm Lock6Time on there. I'm Lock6Time everywhere. Um, we'll have a chat. <laughs> about whatever you want you can tell me that I'm totally wrong about things and we'll have a polite discussion and exchange witticisms mm -hmm. that's about it and I do this show as well the voxel potpourri <laughs> the voxel potpourri smells like victory cubed mm -hmm. alright Tobran go alright okay my name is Tobran Ermwood I run a YouTube channel on YouTube obviously mm -hmm. um, uh, youtube.com slash user slash Tobran Ermwood and I just talk about um, anything related to EverQuest Next, I have a weekly show called EQN Talk where I just sum up all the news that Sony have given us, maybe in the community as well, and just put it into one big fat mess of a show that you can just watch and enjoy. <laughs> and also be sure to follow me on Twitter because I will tweet out anything I'm thinking about, maybe I have, might have an idea for a roundtable question. I don't know what I'm thinking that week, but you know, be sure to follow me and we'll have a talk, maybe. I don't know. Depends how you smell. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Go ahead. Mr. Trendane. Well, it's I'm I'm Trendane everywhere exactly as it's written. Oh, yeah, it's not I written up. right. Here. But yeah, you can probably <laughs> see it in the chat if you're watching this live. If you're not, the hell is wrong with you? you should, I mean, I'm glad you're watching it on YouTube after the fact. But you just get in the channel, get in here and watch it on Twitch. Anyway, yes, trending T R E N D A N E everywhere. Excellent. Perfect. All right, and uh, I'm Geek Domo. Everywhere. That's it. <laughs> yeah, you can check out my Twitter and Facebook. Everything's just slash Geek Domo. I have a website, geekdomo.com. <clears throat> now, I thought. Oh, God. I always oh, sorry, do it this sentence. I thought I always do it this way. I thought I always add, I say, t tell me about your channel, tell me about your channel, your channel, then I do mine last. Somebody said that they like the show, but I, to be more professional, I should go last. But I thought I always <laughs> do go last. Well, like with with grammar, like if you're listing, like if you were to say uh, Locke, Toby, Domo, and me, mm -hmm. you always list yourself last yeah. to be grammatically correct. So yeah, that would that would make sense. I maybe I screwed that up. Who knows? But to learn whether you're supposed to use me or I, you strip everybody else out of the sentence, <laughs> and that's how you know which one you're supposed to use. Because hmm. if you were going to say. Lock, Domo, Toby, and I went to the store. If you trip, strip everybody else out and you had said, me, me go to the store, that sentence makes no sense. Makes no sense. But if you said I, that's how you know. Agent Smith was here tonight. Well, was he? He, looks, oh. he looks like yeah, everybody yeah. else. I never I saw didn't, that. I didn't see he was him. So. <laughs> how vaults work. And I, <clears throat> sorry, my oh. voice is shot now. I do want to thank Omid and uh, Penapod for being here. And if Smith, if you were here, I loved watching you play your game earlier. That was great. Mr. Smith. I don't know if he's still here. Well, no. <laughs> oh well, I'm sorry. And then this is this is the last final thing before we go tonight. Uh, Locke's uh, significant other put up a tweet showing that uh, <laughs> I was going to be attacked by a um, Lego character. So this <laughs> is my this is my rebuttal. Yes? <laughs> There's a delay. Uh, oh, wow. thank you. I was like, uh. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a Geek Domo Lego. Mm. That's uh, pretty awesome. It's, it's kind of chompy, right. too. And yeah. Rah, 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 rah. It's going to fight the other. Okay. I've got, I got the whole gang back here. Oh, Ooh. wow. <laughs> we roll deep, son. We roll deep. What? What? what, what? <laughs> All right, everybody. What now? Uh, thanks everybody for coming and watching and uh, we had a really good time tonight sorry we went over two hours but this will be available on YouTube uh, sometime, in sometime soon yeah <laughs> it, it, it takes forever soon. to re-upload uh, but and then of course our sponsors are EQ Nexus www.eqnexus.com is, is your place to talk open everything you want to talk about over there with EverQuest Next it's right there so make sure you check out their site and we will be back next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. So until next time, see ya. Be careless. Bye. <laughs>